podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Radio Network's on Saturday, August 21st, 2021. This is episode 1,821. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by AT&T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days and are always on them, whether it's live streaming content, catching up with family on weekly video calls, or watching your favorite podcasts. There's no room for fraud calls. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor, 24-7, proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash activearmor for details. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Yeah, time to talk computers. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies in advance. Time to talk uh, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, all that, you know, smart cars, 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number 888-827-5536. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside that area, you can still call. Sure you can, just use Skype or something like that. It'll call right, something that calls phone numbers from the internet. And uh, that should be free because... The internet's free, isn't it? <laughs> it's supposed to be. 8888 Ask Leo. You know what else is free? The fine website we've created just for your perusal. Techguylabs.com. Techguylabs.com. And I mention that because when you're listening to the show, you don't have to feel compelled at any point to um, write anything down or memorize anything or, you know, in any way respond to the show, because it will all be stored for you. James DeRuvo's writing it down. He's putting it up at the at the website, and uh, we even put audio and video from the site afterwards. So, I mean, for crying out loud, there's no reason to write any of that down. You can just in infinite rewind. But if you hear something, uh, that's where it'll be, all the links, everything. And there's no sign-up. There's no charge. It's free. Tech, you just wander in. Techguylabs.com. Com. Just got a, a recall. My wife drives a Chevy Bolt electric vehicle. And uh, Chevy, <laughs> it's going to cost them, they say, $1.8 billion is getting them all back and replacing the batteries. I guess they had a problem with the batteries. Uh, you know, I think two, there were two car fires out of, I don't know, 20 or 30,000 cars, maybe more. Um, but you know, good for them. They're they're being responsible. They're re replacing the batteries. So uh, for now, we uh, we can't charge it up all the way. You don't generally with electric vehicles anyway. You charge it to ninety percent usually, unless you know you're going farther. And we don't, most importantly, discharge it all the way. They're trying to kind of narrow the range of charge and discharge. And then <laughs> this is the scary part. They say. Oh, it probably only should charge during the day while you can keep an eye on it in case it bursts into flames. And immediately after charging, park it outside away from the house. <laughs> That's scary. Um, I, you know, I'm going to point out, this would be a good time to point out, that anything that can uh, hold enough juice to move a two-ton vehicle down the road at 70 miles an hour, that's a lot of energy, is going to have... A ton of energy in there, and almost every technology has the capability of explosively releasing that energy. Gasoline, have you ever heard of a car fire? Oh, yeah, <laughs> a few of those. Hardly a movie goes by without a car exploding. We don't go, oh, I'm never driving one of those again. Those things is dangerous. <laughs> uh, hydrogen, sure. Sure, there's hydrogen vehicles. Toyota makes them, others do. There's hydrogen trucks. Uh, remember the Hindenburg? Yeah, hydrogen. But again, uh, I actually asked our car guy, Sam Abil Samud, about that. And he said, those tanks that Toyota's putting on the Mirai and other hydrogen vehicles, those tanks, you could explode a nuclear bomb next to them. They wouldn't, well, I doubt that's true. But, you know, they're, they're pretty puncture resilient. 
but you know, if you've got a smartphone, you, we've all seen the videos, <laughs> usually hysterical, of a smartphone bursting into flame in somebody's pocket. Something to be aware of. Lithium-ion batteries uh, store a lot of energy in a small space. And if that energy is released quickly, it could, you know, cause a surprise. Hello. Even a fire. So we'll be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be driving that car a little more judiciously until we can get that replaced. Nevertheless, I have to say, I've driven, uh, we, I had a Tesla, I have a Ford Electric now, I, uh, we've driven the, we have the Bolt. I like electric vehicles, and I'm not going to, this is not going to sway me from uh, continuing to buy them. I like driving them. None of them have burst into flames yet, <laughs> as, far as, as, I, as far as I know. So, okay. Okay, just thought I'd mention that. Do not get overexcited about, speaking of Tesla's, Elon Musk's bot. Elon Musk said that Tesla is going to produce a new humanoid robot in the near future. He says, our cars are semi-sentient robots on wheels. It kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. We're also quite good at sensors and batteries and actuators. So we think we'll probably have a prototype sometime next year that basically looks like this. And then a human dancer in a robot suit came out and capered around to dubstep music. <laughs> That's probably just a coincidence that at the same time as Elon is announcing this dancing robot, Federal investigators are looking <laughs> at the autopilot on Teslas and their tendency to crash into parked emergency vehicles. Don't pay no attention to that, says Elon. Look at the person in the suit dancing. It's a robot. Tesla's promised a lot of things. Elon has promised a lot of things. I'm not going to be too worried about uh, the Tesla robot next year. There is a company, I don't know if you've seen the video, Boston Dynamics, which has gone through quite, quite a few owners. Google had them for a while, then realized, you know, probably not the best PR for a company people already think maybe knows too much about us and maybe is a little bit creepy to own robots <laughs> that uh, look like Terminators. Probably not a good look, so we're going to sell this company. They have been... Boston Dynamics, they have a dog that's quite impressive. Spot, the robotic dog. Scary as heck, but impressive. And they've been working on humanoid robots, the kind Elon wants to build next year. For 10 years, they still fall over a lot. Although, there's a great video. I don't know if you've seen the video of the Boston Dynamics huma humanoid robot doing parkour. <laughs> You know, that's that thing where you jump around, climb up buildings and stuff. Pretty impressive. They don't mention how many takes they had. They, it took more than one take to do that. Anyway, we'll see. Elon's just, you know, Elon's Elon. Everybody who everybody who follows him. You know, I, I, for a long time, I thought, oh, my gosh, this guy is, is the, uh, you know, is the real-life version of of Stark Industries, you know? I mean, <laughs> he's, uh, this guy's got it going on. And then I realized, you know, he's also got some quirks. He's a little different. I wonder if it's the case, it seems to be, that in order to be a technology startup founder, you have to be a little cuckoo. I was just reading an article about uh, Tim Cook, the current CEO of Apple and one of the formal Apple execs said, it's kind of quiet and dull around here with Tim. It was so much more exciting when Steve <laughs> Steve Jobs was uh, running the company. Yeah. Yeah, because Steve would fire you at the drop of a hat. It was definitely exciting. <laughs> In the same way, you know, uh, walking over a snake pit would be exciting. Uh, but it seems to be a lot of these guys are kind of kind of wild. Kind of wild. Even Jeff Bezos and Larry Page of Google, and they're all kind of, they, uh, you, you have to be, I think you have to be, to think, I, me, can change the world. I'm going to change the world. And 
and uh, and you can't stop me. And uh, even if people don't get it and think I'm crazy, uh, I'm going to change the world. Steve had a great quote about changing the world, actually, that I, I really liked. He said uh, um, it happened to him uh, at some point as a kid. He realized that the world around him wasn't created by people any smarter than he is. And that, in fact, he could do anything he wanted. Oh, there's the, there's the giant leap, isn't it? <laughs> he, could, he could invent anything he wanted, do anything he wanted, because the world, the way it is, is just constructed by other people. He says, life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. I'll tell you the secret. I've met Steve Jobs. I know a little bit about him. He's not thinking no smarter than you. He's thinking dumber than he is, just between you and me. He did, you know, he softened it up a little bit. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were dumber than you. Well, no smarter than you. And, and this is the important thing, you can change it. You can influence it. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. In, you know, in medical textbooks, they call that megalomania. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, I, you kind of have to have a little bit of that to, to change the world, I think. And to say, you know what? I've got a better idea. My idea is so good. I'm going to move heaven and earth. I don't care who gets in my way to make it happen. Elon Musk, perfect example. It's, it's, it's just, I, I've, as somebody who's on the sidelines watching this circus we call tech happen, I just find this all quite interesting, quite fascinating. Now, nowadays, I just text to say I love you, right? Why call when you can text? Yes. I, I just send an email. Phone call. <laughs> yeah, I know. But then you call, you say I love you, and then what do you say after that? It gets all gushy, and I don't know. <laughs> text is so straightforward. You say, hey, I love you. Love you. <laughs> mean it. <laughs> mean it. Olive juice. Oh, that's cute. I never heard that one before. It's when you say the words olive juice, your lips move just like I love you. <laughs> olive juice. <laughs> so that you don't have to actually you know, say it. It just looks like you did. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's Kim Schaffer there. She's our phone angel. People call and say I love you all the time, but uh, then she has to hang up on them and call. And you have No, to I just have to put them on hold for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, just I'm going to let you cool your heels, buddy boy. Who should I start with here? Let's talk to Billy in San Diego. Okay. Line three. Thank you, Kim. Hello, Billy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Good morning, Leo. This morning. is uh, Billy, and I have the strangest problem here uh, with my Office Jet, HP Office Jet 8600. Where's my t-shirt? Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I have a t-shirt that says, ask me a printer question and see what happens. But go ahead. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> here's, here's what happened. Yes. So this, this, this machine has been working beautifully for a long time. And I just upgraded to the newest version of Mac OS X, uh, which is, I think, 11.5.2, if, if memory serves. Oh, that's not the newest version, but okay. Is it? Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, these dots. So. You got, you, you, <laughs> these dots get me every time. You got Big Sur. That's, yeah. the, that's all I know. It's Big Sur. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's Big Sur. Big Sur. Uh, but here's. Here's the situation. Yes. Um, for some reason, whenever I go to scan, whether scanning from the device or using the, the built-in scan app, what basically happens is I get an error message that scanner3.app, uh, I don't have permission to run it. Oh. Uh, like, what? So yeah, this is, gate, this is Gatekeeper popping up. Okay. So Apple, in order to be more secure, and that's not a bad idea, uh, has made it so that you need the only apps that can run without your explicit permission are apps that are from the App Store or notarized by Apple to be to belong to this specific developer. 
They don't want malicious apps on your system. You can go around that, but that's what Gatekeeper does. It'll it'll give you that warning. I'm sorry, you, you can't run that app. Now, permissions is a little different, so I'm going to withhold judgment, but it sounds like it might be Gatekeeper. So what have you done after that? Well, so I completely uninstalled installed the current uh, local drivers that I have, yeah. and I went to HP's website and downloaded the new one and basically got the same thing. Yeah. But here's what's, really, here's what's really weird, Leo, is I go to my search utility and I said, find this Scanner3.app that you're having a hard time with. Yeah. Because what I could do is I could go out to Terminal go out myself and basically change the permissions, override them myself. And I've done that before. Yes. But it can't find it. That There's no such file. Yeah, let me, let me run through Apple's fix for this. This, by the way, is a known bug with Big Sur. In fact, I'm looking at okay. uh, Apple's support document, which has an image that says, you do not have the permission to open the application HP Scanner 3. <laughs> so yeah. so I, think, I think we've, we've nailed it. We've nailed it. Um, so this is what, so Apple says we're going to fix this in an update. But I'm looking at, by the way, a document from August 13th. Here's that you can resolve this issue with some, some voodoo. Quit any apps that are open. From the menu bar in the finder, choose go, go to folder. Then go to the folder that is... Of the, you know, I'm going to put this link. It's uh, in the show notes, but, but I'll read it anyway, okay. just to, so you can laugh. But it is uh, Apple support document 212756, HT 212756. You could just Google that. Type slash library slash image capture with a space between image and capture slash devices, then press return. In the window that opens... Double-click the app named in the error message. It's the name of your scanner driver. Nothing should happen when you open it. Close the window. Now, open the app you were using to scan. A new scan should proceed normally. If you later choose to scan from a different app and get the same error, <laughs> lather, rinse, repeat. Do it all over again. <laughs> okay. So I think it is Gatekeeper, but uh, but Apple's going to put out a... F it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. This issue is expected to be resolved in a future software update. So um, library slash library, that's the root library, slash image capture slash devices. You could probably n navigate to it. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, and, and then you'll see the app in there that's named in the error message, this scanner app 3. And double click it, run it. Nothing should happen. But then okay. your scanner should work. What a great fix that is. And if it happens again, do it again. I'll put a link at techguylabs.com. Scott Wilkinson, home theater geek, coming up. So it's not just HP. Apparently uh, somebody in the chat room says it happens with his Epson as well. I haven't had it happen to me yet, but uh, it's, it's a well-known problem. Isn't that silly? What is hip? Well, this cat, man, is so hip. Scott Wilkinson, he is uh, our hipster home theater guru, joins us each and every week <laughs> to talk about uh, AV, big screen TVs, surround sound. Hello, Scott. Hey, Leo. How you doing? Contributor at techhive.com. I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Thanks. What is up in your world? What is hip? Good. Well, I got to <laughs> I got to tell you one thing that I've recently started streaming uh, almost binging not quite uh but that I'm really digging is on Apple TV Plus Schmigadoon Schmigadoon yeah <laughs> It's a it's a very you know one thing I've noticed about some TV shows I was watching uh, The White Lotus also on HBO which Oh I haven't I, watched that I one I don't recommend but I I think it's the same thing with Schmigadoon what we're seeing now is shows that you could safely do during COVID. So the White Lotus was entirely shot at the Maui um, uh, Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. One location, no guests. You could you could safely shoot it there. Schmigadoon is entirely shot on a, obviously, on a sound phony stage. soundstage. I've, I mean, they want it to look fun. Yeah, yeah. It looks, it's like a, well, remember the old movie Brigadoon? This is yeah. kind of like that. They're lost and uh, they can't get back <laughs> until they find true love. They're living right. in it. It's cute. It's got a great cast. Love the cast. Great yeah. cast. Yeah. Ke Keegan-Michael Keane, um, 
uh, Cecily Strong from Saturday Night Live. Um, Love the uh, all the cameos, too, from people like Martin Short as a leprechaun. As a leprechaun, yeah. yes. And I have to tell you, it, basically, yeah, it's a, it's a parody and a love letter to 40s and 50s musicals. Yes. And actually, and the music's pretty good. I was surprised. The music is really good. This is good. not the first thing that Apple's done as a tribute to musicals. And it's interesting, Apple has a kind of uh, love of this. Because remember Central mm -hmm. Park, which is an animated series where the cartoon characters would burst into song yeah, all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, these like characters that. do too, and yeah. and so sing, song and dance. But it's the music is, it's so reminiscent of, of uh, Brigadoon, yeah. of, yeah. you know, of all these uh, famous musicals. It, they, they got j very close to, but, but the words are new and very inventive, very creative. Um, I just love it. I'm I'm having a great time watching that. My wife and I are just enjoying the heck out of it. Of course, I have a lot of experience with musicals. In college, I used to play in the pit orchestra uh, of musicals. Yes. Uh, so I've done a lot of I've done a lot of those shows. Uh, last I watched episode three and four last night, and uh, they did the Music Man. They did a parody of a Music Man piece that was so right on. So I'm I'm hooked. I think it's great. It may not be everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, I love musicals, and I know that that's an acquired taste. But I I love yeah. musicals too. Yeah, yeah. So it was it's great. Yeah, Foundation's Any coming. Are you excited about that? That's oh, going to be on Apple man, TV am, next month. I'm super excited yeah, about that. We're all October, I mean, you I know, I, I gotta be I gotta be clear that I'm Dune as well is coming and I'm very excited about that. Although I was about the original Dune in the, what was it? 1984, I think, or yeah. so. And that was a and disappointment. Was, <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just awful. So, so uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm yeah. tempering my enthusiasm yeah. here until I actually see it. How are you going to, uh, how are you going to make the foundation, which I'm actually in the process of rereading right now. I'm in the middle of the third book and cause it was so phenomenal. I read it in college and it was just so great. And I just decided, well, this, the, the series is coming out, so I'm going to read it again. I think Apple pinned a lot of hopes to this because, uh, yeah. frankly, they, you know, except for Ted Lasso, Lasso which uh, mm -hmm. is getting uh, a lot of attention and awards, they haven't really had a breakout hit on Apple TV+. <laughs> Plus. And, you know, they're competing against things like Disney+, Plus, which is just, and right. Netflix, which both are, yeah, which yeah, are doing yeah. very, very well. Very well. Yeah, and it's tough exactly. without all of that back catalog and everything. Well, Foundation, I, when, when's it coming out? October. Uh, October? Yeah. Yeah. I am I am really looking forward all, to all that. All the geeky uh, sci-fi fanboys are excited about it. <laughs> We've got an interesting well, intersection here between uh, ho uh, musical theater geeks and yep. sci-fi geeks. And there's this yep. little wedge... And that's you. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. It's me. I'm I'm a geek on both those counts. So, so there's a lot to watch on TV. And yeah. Shmiga Dune, I don't know if you've noticed, is is also in HDR, and it looks fantastic. Yeah, we watched it on the on the LG 4K. It was very mm -hmm. pretty. Looks very pretty. See, I'm of a, of a different opinion. I think that we've run out of TV. <laughs> Seriously, the COVID just the, has there been a good movie uh this year? We're in August. Uh we're in August. Yeah, I don't know since I haven't been to the theater. I think I we've mean, the really theaters are uh, open again, but I'm not I'm not going back to the theater. I, I think uh I think we're going to be a little hiatus now while we uh wait through this production lag and then maybe get back yeah. to work. Yeah. What else is new I, in your world? Well, I I was watching TV late last night. And I found a commercial that I thought was really interesting and highly uh, misleading. <laughs> it's for a it's for a, an over the air TV antenna. It's called Clear TV. Maybe you've seen it. They they do these long commercials, almost infomercials, late at night. And it's basically a pair of rabbit ears, right? You remember rabbit ears. <laughs> They're back. <laughs> They're back, baby. <laughs> oh, it looks just like rabbit ears. It looks just like, because that's what it is. Oh, and they, please. Every other word in this long commercial was 4K UHD. Really? Yeah, wow. you can get 4K UHD Watch for 4K free. TV free. It says it on its website. It says it on its website. Well... If you live in a certain market, 
the and your TV has an ATSC 3.0 tuner in it, which is which still rare. Still pretty rare. LGs have them. Sony's have them. And, and you live the- two miles from the antenna mm-hmm. because this is not. This is an indoor antenna. It is. It's not a great yes. antenna. It's not. And they claim 35 mile range on this antenna. But I read a review on um, Tech Radar. And they said, uh, you know, in my second story bedroom, it worked great. But in my first floor room, it didn't work well at all. No. I'm also looking at how it connects to your TV. And it connects to your TV via the antenna coax. Correct. Which means your TV needs an ATSC 3.0 tuner. Well, it doesn't. You could use a regular tuner, but you would only get 1080p. Then you'd get HD. Yeah, an HD, HD broadcast. Let's be fair. If you can get broadcast HD, that's probably the best quality HD you can get. It's true, uh, and, except for and a Blu-ray. It is free. Yeah, yeah. So you know that that, but, but they're selling it on on t- on the TV show for twenty bucks. Yeah, plus eight dollars wall- postage and handling. By the way, I might. Right. <laughs> oh, but wait, there's wait, more. They'll wait. send you one. They'll send you one. two. <laughs> Just pay separate postage and handling for the second antenna. Yeah, yeah. So your but what's you your recommendation? Oh, uh, there are there are plenty of better better antennas. over the air yeah. antennas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mohu uh, is one. Um, Weingard makes makes a very nice selection of out outdoor and indoor. And I also recommend if you can, an outdoor antenna is better. Uh, it'll get better reception. You have to climb up on your roof and put it on your roof. And that's kind of, that's, there's a great website, uh, a nonprofit from the CEA called antenna web, antenna Antenna web.org that will tell Mm -hmm. you a lot about what you can get, where to put it, that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But I just thought this commercial was so misleading that, that, oh, you can get 4k UHD for free. Yeah. And well, yeah, sort of, not really, not for very many people anyway. Yeah. So beware, buyer beware, I say. <laughs> Scott Wilkinson, his uh, reviews are at uh, many places, including ExtremeTech and TechHive.com. And of course, he joins us each week to talk home theater. That's why we call him our very own home theater geek. Now, I didn't realize it was also our musical theater geek so <laughs> and our sci-fi geek. He's a man of many hats. Damn Thank you, Scott. Straight. Righty, righty, all righty. It's all yours, my friend. Thank you. Can you, you. stick around at the top of the hour? Uh, of course I can. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mike Heiss in the chat room is is reminding us also of Antenna Direct and Channel Master. I'd forgotten Channel Master Channel and Antenna Master. Direct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they're good. Mohu, he he mentions that I mentioned them. Uh, is Weingard even still around? I oh, hope yeah. they are because I, I think mentioned they are. them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're the old school. G A R D. <laughs> yes, they are still around. Weingard.com. 65 yeah. years plus. They're older than yeah. me. <laughs> nice. Almost older than me, In but fact, not quite. They acquired Wi Fi Ranger, whatever that means. So. Oh, I don't know. You must be making, mo- making money. Mike High says that Samsung also has ATSC 3.0 tuners in them. So Samsung, Sony, and LG, the big, the big makers. All of them, all or have- just uh, is that a special? I mean, if you bought it, it might be well. It probably their higher end TVs. Yeah, yeah it's and true. only this year. Yeah, right. You know, so if you have a TV that's older than than this year's current models, you don't have it. Yeah, for the most part. Hey, um, I've got enough points <laughs> from yes. Ford for a oil change and tire rotation on my electric vehicle. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. <laughs> okay, Ford. Thank you for paying close attention to what I purchased. Eh, a friend. I have a friend in Santa Cruz actually who has a a Bolt, and I I'm sure he probably knows about it, but I'll have to call him and make sure he knows. Yes. Well, he'll get called by. He'll get an email from his dealer. He'll get an email or something yeah. from them. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Scooter X is also saying the 2021 TVs from Samsung, Sony, and LG can get it. Um, 
So let's let's see. That's a good good link there, Scooter X. Let's see. Oh, it's by Jeff Morrison, of course. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Oh, it's some 2020 LGs, the ZX, WX, and GX, not the CX, which is the most common and important one, I think. 2021, only the Z1 and G1. So not the Cs. The Cs don't get it. And that's those are easily the most important. Um, because, well, the most affordable anyway. Uh, Samsung 2020 Q950 and 900, and the 2021 QN 900, 890. So again, the high end, the high end TVs. Uh, in 2020, the X900H from Sony had it, and in 2021, a, a larger number. But again, the high end. The high-end models are the ones that are going to have it. And then, of course, you want to make sure that the local television stations offer it. Otherwise, there's right. no exactly. point. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. And the, the ATSC 3.0, Mike, uh, Mike Heiss can help me here, um, is only in 50%, 60% of the U.S. markets, something like that. Uh, Phoenix Warp one says, uh, "Remember that's Chevy, not Ford." Oh, that's true. Uh, it's the Chevy Bolt, right? Leo? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking yeah. about my Ford for something else entirely. Uh, right. 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 The two you've, got, you've got a, a, a Mustang Mach -E, e, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they Mach -E, offered me a yeah. free oil change, which I'm very grateful uh, for. Ah. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> They're not issuing a recall, are they? No. <laughs> not yet. Anyway. Well, there was a little. Uh, Offer to do the software update, but that's it. Stick right. around for the top. You betcha. All righty. Thank you, sir. Our podcast today brought to you by AT&T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days. I mean, I live on my phone. Uh, always on them, whether it's live streaming content or catching up with the family on weekly video calls. We do that every Thursday. Or, you know, watching maybe uh, your, your favorite uh, podcast. You got one? Maybe watching the Tech Guy show. The last thing you want in the middle of a show is a fraudulent phone call. Your auto warranty is expired. No, it hasn't. In fact, it got so bad for a while that I just stopped answering the phone entirely. I just assumed every phone call was a robocall or spam call or fraudulent call. But I have to say, AT&T solved it. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor, 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats and at no extra charge. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash active armor for details. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 88, 88, ask Leo. Mike on the line from Hampton, Virginia. Hello, Mike. Hey, Leo. How are you doing today? I'm great. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, got a quick question. It's actually for my mother who lives up in Big Bear, California. Nice. And so she doesn't get terrestrial uh, internet in her house. She doesn't get cable or it's not even available in her area. So she's got a Verizon jetpack that she uses for her her laptop. Okay. But she doesn't have anything that she can get Wi-Fi throughout the house. And I was just wondering if there's anything else out there that's Maybe a little bit more robust. Than yeah, she has a couple of choices. Wi-Fi up to. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Verizon will also offer a kind of home internet package. Uh, if she gets good Verizon uh, service, she might want to call them and say, hey, look, I'd like to use it for my internet. T-Mobile also is offering that in some regions, not all, probably not Big Bear, but it's worth a call to T-Mobile. But it, it sounds like because she's got good Verizon connectivity, that's the first place I'd go. That's so that, you know, she can get, her internet through the cable uh, the uh, phone company. Now, the drawback to that is, in many well, cases, they, they charge a lot more and they have limits on bandwidth caps and so forth. But if they offer home internet, that would be the, the choice for that. The other way she can go is satellite. Like a landline? No, no, Verizon. There's no, landline. Uh, no, no, Verizon's through, uh, it's through a cell carrier. So, okay. yeah, so that's, I, I presume, yeah, she has no landline. She has, but she is able to get Verizon right. data. And that's good news. That means that she could probably get fairly high speed from Verizon. But she'd have to, she wouldn't want to use her phone as a hotspot, for instance, which she could, because she'll quickly tap out the bandwidth cap. 
because they don't want you right. to use more than say five gigs or six gigs, maybe eight at most, and you go go through that in a few hours on Netflix or something. Uh, but you should, she can call them and say, look, since she's get my point being that she's getting a good signal from them, she should call them and see what kind of options they have for home internet. The, okay. More and more companies will offer this because of T-Mobile, which is T-Mobile's rolling this out nationwide. So there's pressure to do this from the other guys. I would ask. The other way to go is satellite. And she is probably eligible for Starlink. Now, this is not cheap, but this is going to be a nice, fast connection. Starlink is a satellite. You spend 500 bucks up front for the equipment, and then it's 99 bucks a month. And she's going to, most people are typically getting between 100 and 200 megabits per second download with faster speeds all the time because they're putting more satellites up all the time. So if she doesn't mind the price, Starlink would be a good choice. There's one other caveat on Starlink. You need to be able to put the, it's got a little dish, a couple of feet across, but it has to be positioned somewhere where there's no obstructions to the entire sky. Usually the best way to do that is put it on, the, on a pole on the roof or, you know, something high. If she's in a kind of a tree, she, I'm sure she's in a tree area, Big Bear. Um, so you want to put it above the trees so that she can see the horizon all around. The best, best the clearest the horizon, the better Starlink will be. Yeah, she's already got satellite TV, so I think you know that's that's something that would be doable. But I think that's probably more pricey. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. yeah so so she's already she's using Verizon for data on her laptop because she's got the Verizon built in the laptop. Uh, but you, yeah. but but as I said, you could expand that. But you would want to check with Verizon about cost, bandwidth caps, etc. Does she? Okay. Does she want to watch? Does she want to? She sounds like she's got TV. So it would mostly be for internet connectivity, not for streaming Netflix things like that. Uh, you know, right now, I mean, all she does is, is pay bills, but, you know, the whole Internet's new to her, and there's yeah. a lot of cat videos out there for her. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, watching high-def video, she's, I'm glad she, she's got TV via satellite, because that's going to be less pressure on her to watch TV on her Internet connection. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you'd really run up against those caps. For, for cat videos or paying bills, I think you're probably all right. So as she can get Verizon makes a car, a box, I can't remember what they call it, I always call them MiFi's, but they make boxes that are basically Wi-Fi, but it uses the LTE from Verizon, and and it's a Wi-Fi adapter for that. And that would solve that. Then she could then she'd have Wi-Fi throughout the house through the same connection she's got right now on her laptop. Right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, but she should check pricing. As I said, bandwidth caps and pricing is where they get you. I think that's going to change. I really do. Let's see what Verizon Scooter X has just given me a link in our chat room to uh, Verizon's Orbic Speed Mobile Hotspot. Yeah, that's it. It's 80 bucks, um, And then you're going to pay for the internet connectivity. You should, as I said, and the jet, she's using the Jetpack. She could use that for a regular, that's a MiFi card. So she could use that as well. Just to uh, put, I think that'll be Wi-Fi throughout the house, actually. Actually, she should check. She may already have what she needs to do what she wants. Ryan's on the line from Mission Viejo, California. Our next caller. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Leo. Olive juice. Olive what? Olive juice. Oh, oh I get it. Olive juice. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't reading your lips properly. <laughs> What's up? Hey, um, my wife is a photographer, and up until about two months ago, she had the twenty. She had a twenty thirteen. MacBook Pro, yeah, which has been still blazingly fast. Sure, um, but it is superseded. It has been superseded, has it not? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, a couple of months ago, her battery started yeah. enlarging by. Ooh, get it now. Apple will replace that, not free, but for not huge expense if you want to keep it going. But that's pretty old, 2013. That's, yes, so it, it might be time, and she will see a huge speed improvement with the new M1 Max. Well, see, that's why I'm calling. We went out and got her an oh, M1. Good. Uh, we just did the MacBook Air, um, and she downloaded Lightroom Classic, and she uh, did the software update that's supposedly native. Now, yeah, make sure she gets, because they have two versions, make sure she gets the M1 version of Lightroom. Those, those were just launched yeah. last month. Yes, 
Okay. She she updated it, um, and we were sure it was the right version. Okay. Um, the problem is is that it is very slow compared to her old Intel Lightroom That's, Classic. That it should be two or three times faster than her 2013 uh, Intel. Um, yeah. That's it's not fun. right. <laughs> According to Adobe, most operations in Lightroom Classic on an M1 Mac will be twice as fast as on an equivalent Intel Mac, and you don't even have an equivalent Intel Mac. You have a very old one. Um, so yeah. something's wrong, obviously. Well, so we figured something was wrong, so yeah. we returned it and got the MacBook Pro M1. That's the same. That's not going to make a big difference. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same slow. Same yeah, slow it's, problem. It's the same it's processor. Really Is it eight gigs of RAM or sixteen? Did you get? Um. Eight. All of them only come with eight. Okay, before. that's not true. They come with sixteen, and you probably do want sixteen. All of in, all of the uh, Adobe benchmarks were on sixteen gigs of RAM. So that could be the source. It shouldn't be. <laughs> it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a lot slower. But that could be the source of the problem. You do need enough RAM, and and Lightroom, Photoshop, the Adobe Creative Cloud apps are very RAM intensive. So I haven't tried them with eight gigs of ram but i'm thinking that's the problem really gosh i didn't it even should be it should be much faster does she have a giant catalog um i mean you might want to use weddings and she yeah you might want to rebuild the catalog <laughs> or or uh start fresh and import the photos again that might be what's slowing it down. It should make it should be so much faster on the M1. A 2013 MacBook Pro is is really going to be a, more than three times slower. It's going to be a lot slower. Something's wrong. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I think I think you got too little RAM. The the Air the only difference is the Air and the Pro. It's the same exact chip, same clock speed, everything is there is a low-end GPU version. You want one with eight graphics cores. And there's less battery, of course, because there's not as much room in the air, and it doesn't have a fan. So that will keep it from getting uh, sustained throughput for a long period of time. It might get hot. However, you should be very close in speed most of the time. So it's not the, it's not the Mac Pro versus the Air. But I do think... Make sure you got the eight cores of GPU and get the 16 gigs of RAM. That's the that's the big deal, and it definitely has 16 gigs. I have 16 gigs on mine. Um, yeah, I think that I mean, this is just loading images. This isn't even, you know, just flicking image by image by image. It just takes a while just to load the thumbnail. I mean, eight gigs of GPU, and it should be that should be easy. Yeah, no, it's much faster. I use Lightroom Classic on an, an M1. It's fine. So uh, make sure I would rebuild the catalog. The catalog might be the slow thing. And uh, so, does she use one-to-one -one, uh, e pre image previews? Because you might need to rebuild all your image previews as well. I here, cup, first thing to do is rebuild the catalog, and and then also turn on if she's using high-quality image previews, it has to regenerate all of those. So she's got to let it sit for a while and regenerate all my image previews. It should at that point go flip 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 flip. It should not be slow to load those, even with RAWs. I think the, I think the catalog is the problem. Um, another way to try this is create a new catalog with just some recent images, you know, and see how fast that okay. is. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, where did you get the? Where did you get it? Uh, Costco. Yeah, that's why they only had eight gigs. So I would always get okay. it from Apple. It's the same price. But Costco has a ninety-day return policy. That's true. Nice. That's a good point, and you're still within that, so that's the good news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah, it's yeah. It probably isn't the RAM, but it, I would still, if I were her, get sixteen gigs. Um, but I should be slickety split. It, I, I actually okay. stopped using Lightroom because loading RAWs was so awful. But it, but M1 fixed it. And it can't be presets by chance? Like presets are old or... No, I would refresh you know. everything. That's why I would build a new catalog. I bet you it's an old catalog. And remember, it has to... It, has to, it may be that it's rebuilding the um, previews. 
And if she's using smart previews and one to one, you know, high quality previews, which she probably is as a photographer, it, you need to let that churn for a couple of days before that's ready to go. That may be what's slow. But I, the best way to test this, create a new catalog, just, you know, this past year's work or something, small, small number of images, and just see how that works. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Scotty, all yours. Thanks, Leo. Hey, you mentioned uh, something about an old, the old MacBook, which I have a like probably the same one she did, 2013, <coughs> that that the battery enlarged, and uh, I went ahead and got a MacBook Air because I wanted to get a a newer computer anyway. But you said something about Apple doing a replacing the battery for not much. I think it's ninety bucks. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I went to a Mac store and they told me it was going to be like three to six hundred bucks. <laughs> Try Apple. <laughs> I, I, I will, like an Apple store. Yeah, they don't want you to have a swollen battery because that's very dangerous. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just see, I, I, three to six hundred doesn't make any sense. It's a fairly easy replacement, and the part mm. isn't that expensive. I think it's more right. like ninety. Okay. I think that store well, was that, trying to get you. Yeah, usually that store is pretty good. Well, maybe it is. Uh, I might be wrong, but uh, um, I'm going to definitely. I, I resisted doing it because I thought, God, three to six hundred bucks. I I mean, I wanted to get a new computer anyway, and I did, and that's fine. The uh, new M1 is wonderful, but uh, you know, if I could salvage that uh, that older MacBook and have it as a secondary computer, that'd be nice. Yeah, the battery itself from Apple is fifty bucks. Um, oh, yeah, they're saying, let me see. I'm looking at their price list, the official Apple price list. Mac, no, da, 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 MacBook Pro out of warranty. Yeah, they are. So is it 13, you said? It's a 13, yeah. Yeah, 199 That's ridiculous. 200 Oh, no, that's with Retina. 129 with a, a regular 13-inch MacBook Pro, so it's an older one. 129 That's still a little bit pricey. Boy, that's... Yeah, well, still, it's better than... You can go to iFixit. It's easy to do. You could do it yourself, and iFixit... Really? Sells. Yeah. It's just some screws. You need the special uh, screwdriver to screwdriver. get the screws yeah. out. Remember the, um, remember the Torx screw? Yeah, driver? these are actually, I think, Pentalobe, but they might be Torx still. But anyway, you, mm -hmm. they'll send you the kit with all the part, all the stuff. You just uh, There's like nine screws in the back. You unscrew it. You take it off. The battery's sitting right there. It's just got one mm -hmm. connector. You pull it, you take it out, you connect the new one, and you're done. It's a very easy oh, okay. fix. So All you right. can, I mean, I think I fix it is like fifty bucks or something. I can't. It's not much more. Well, but then you need to buy the battery as well. right? No, that includes the battery. Oh, that includes the battery. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, they say difficult. Oh, yeah. You should. Uh, it's glued in. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at, for the one that you have. If you have Retina, it's more. It's more complicated. That's why it's so right. expensive. They glued it in. Gosh uh, darn it. That's annoying. Yeah, they have a bunch of glued in modules. But you can mm. go to iFixit and find your model and watch the look at the pictures in the video and see how comfortable you are with it. I, okay. I would do this. I, it's an easy thing to do. And they mm -hmm. sell all the parts and everything. Let me just see what they charge. The retina is more expensive. I see now why the retina is more expensive. <laughs> yeah, if everything's glued, it's glued in. in. Stupid. Um. Yeah, I don't see the price off the top of my head. Go ahead and you talk. I'll find the price for you. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, certainly someone here just uh, asked me, Alan Gabriel, best new OLED TV. Uh, and you didn't even use my full screen name. Yeah, it's 109 bucks. It. Just have Apple do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um. Best new OLED TV, uh, I would have to say for the money, it would be the LG C1, uh, which is their 2021 model of, of their OLED. Um, Sony costs more. Uh, their processing is also very good. The processing on both of them is really good. Uh, Vizio now has an OLED that's somewhat less. I haven't seen it, but I imagine it's good, plenty good, because they use the same panel as everybody else from LG Display. Um, I wouldn't spend the extra money on the LG higher end GX and WX, unless you want the ATSC 3.0 tuner, <laughs> which we were talking about earlier. 
uh, because the C1 doesn't have it. Uh, however, you can get an external uh, ATSC 3.0 tuner. Mike Heiss hit me to this in the chat room, and I was just looking at it. And uh, it is, there are two that uh, Jeff Morrison talks about in his article on CNET. One is called the Zapper Box M1 by Bitrouter. Um, it's, uh, you can, it says you can pre order it now. This article is from February. They should be starting shipping in the spring. So they should be here now. 249 bucks or HD Home Run uh, for 200 bucks. So there you go. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Have a great week. You too. See you next week. Thanks. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the Tech Guy Hour 2 of the Tech Guy Show. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888 827 5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, outside that area. Just use Skype. Shouldn't cost you anything to call us. 8888-ASK-LEO. All the answers and all the questions are at techguylabs.com. That's a free website with all the information you need that you hear on the show. I put links up there. Actually, to be fair, James Deruvo, our scribe, puts links up there, everything we say. We even put audio and video from the show up there after the fact. Tech Guy labs.com back to the phones we go atlanta georgia david's on the line hello david hello leo welcome i have a question about the pet cube camera app that i'm using on an android phone <laughs> oh wow that i never i never met anybody who used that okay go ahead <laughs> uh, it may actually be android issues yeah so um yeah. ultimately if you have sites for this kind of android question I'd be interested to where I can look later. But um, the app is, well, first, uh, the Pet Cube Cam, for people who don't know, is to let you watch your pets. Yeah. And the app you can install. You can even play with your pets. On some of them, they yeah. have either a laser or yeah. one, they're ones that'll toss out treats. It'll feed them. Yeah. Uh, mine doesn't have either of those, but you can. It does have. Uh, um, mic and speaker, so you like an intercom. You can yeah. listen and talk to the pet. I think I, I think when they first came out, we got one to try, and um, our our uh, the dog just ignored it. So <laughs> I, think, I think I sent it back. But does it work with your with your uh, buddy? I'm using it for a, a homeless cat, and it's Aww. been pretty good to nice. watch what's going on. Nice. But here are a couple of the issues. The app is supposed to alert you when it detects motion right. or even tell it when it detects sound. Right. Um, often what's happening is I don't get those alerts until 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes later. Yeah. And coincidentally, sometimes when I, I leave my phone with the screen off and you know, I tap the power button, when I tap that, it will instantly give me one of those alerts from some time ago. So I'm thinking it's the phone that's not pulling enough or not checking Wi-Fi or something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, this is using notification. You know, I, I have similar problems with my Nest cams. Notifications, I think, are not designed to be so real-time. Uh, certainly with a pet, you'd want to know immediately. Right. And... Um, you know, it's the same thing with a with a uh, like the uh, on the Nest cams when the doorbell is rung or there's movement in the yard. Sometimes it'll happen right away, and then sometimes it takes a while. Uh, who's your carrier? I guess is the first question. Well, I'm doing this on Wi-Fi, so this is all local. I'm you know reasonable short distance from my router. I got good signal there. I have a uh, okay, but I think that the notifications because here's what happens: the pet cube uses the Wi-Fi to phone home, not you. It doesn't go directly to you. It goes to PetCube Central. Mm -hmm. Then PetCube Central uses the cell cellular network to relay it to your phone. They can, but I've actually, I've got mobile data turned off most of the time. Oh, okay. I'm so it's supposed it to do it via Wi-Fi, huh? Yep. Huh. And someone asked on the chat, it's a Moto E4, so a little bit older model. It's whatever the latest, I think, I was going to look at what version of Android it's running, whatever the latest they updated to. 
So this is an unusual uh, setup because normally you don't have uh, kind of Wi-Fi peer-to-peer -peer notifications. Usually the push well, it is, is... It is not. It's not. Yeah, it's not peer-to-peer. -peer. It is going to their router or their their server, I guess, and that's sending back through via the internet, the internet to your phone. To your okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, is there anything that maybe the phone is putting? Well, there are, you know, there there could be. I'm wondering now if there's settings. The the one thing you said that's kind of interesting is that when you wake up the phone, suddenly you get the notification. Often, so not always. Not always. I would definitely look in your notifications setup and make sure that if the phone's, you know, a lot of times you don't want push notifications while your phone's sleeping because that would wake you up. So I would make sure that those are allowed for that app, that it can wake up the phone. Um, that I'm, I'm wondering if that's related. But even when the phone's unlocked, you said it's slow. Right. So sometimes. Sometimes it's fast, slow. There's just no rhyme or reason. Yeah. I've tried streaming like an audio or, or radio station to try to keep the Wi-Fi going. And that yeah, no, I think, it's pet, I think it's the home office. It's PetCube. It could be. That's and, and that's. Is there gonna? Is there a way I can tell when they actually? <laughs> no, <it? laughs> no. You know, I, the problem is they they have to have their servers have to be responsive. Basically, uh, as long as you've checked your your notification settings for that app specifically and for your phone in general, and you don't have anything that's turning it off while the phone's asleep, or but the fact that it's kind of slow and unpredictably slow. That sounds to me like the home office. That sounds like how fast they're turning that around. You might might give them a ring if they have a phone number and and say, you know, you guys is it, they may never admit this, but uh, is it slow sometimes? Uh, I think that has a lot to do with how they've set it up. Um, you don't have an iPhone line around, do you? No, I don't. Because they, they do support iOS, and it might be interesting to see if it's better on iOS. Yeah. iOS uses a somewhat different notification system, um, and it might be more responsive. I, you know, uh, the, now, this is interesting. You, say, you said you're in the chat room. You might note that we have some sophisticated developer types in the chat room, like Judge, who says the app developer also determines something called the minimum background fetch interval, and that can be set you know, the developer gets to set that uh, and may have it set to a very high number. Uh, he may also be looking at your battery. Is it plugged in? Not currently, and I've got a pretty full, you know, a lot of, a lot of the time it's pretty full. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, this, this, uh, this whole notification system isn't as seamless as we would like. You know, ideally, something would happen, the camera would ping, pet cube, pet cube would leap into action send you a ping, and seconds later you'd get a ping. But I've noticed even with things like the Nest Cam, sometimes it's instant, sometimes it's seconds, sometimes it's minutes later. And I really think that has more to do with PetCube and how responsive they are, maybe how they've, they've uh, created their app. Well, I've been talking to the developers. I've actually oh, good. sent me a beta cam that's what i've been testing so oh good yeah well you might ask them about that you know ask them about their minimum background fetch interval <laughs> the other issue real quick yeah uh, the other thing it's doing and this i don't know if this is an android issue also it seems like at night like 7 p.m until i don't know 8 a.m it the the app will only send vibration and not the sound alerts. There you go. And I don't have anything. They, I've talked to them about this. They claim that they don't have anything in their app to cause that. No, no, that would be an Android setting. Okay, well, I don't have Do Not Disturb turned on. I don't have a schedule for that. <laughs> so I can't figure out unless it's hiding somewhere. I mean, I don't well, know. Well, God knows that Android's very good at hiding stuff. Yeah. Um, that's inter That's really interesting. So it won't make a noise. Yeah, I would go. I would look in your. Um, <laughs> that is that is typical. Do not disturb setting. Uh, you know, after after a certain you know time of the night, don't 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 buzz me. Don't buzz me, man. Uh, that's interesting. Um. So look at that. Here's somebody with. Uh, if you're in the chat room again, this is an even more sophisticated. 
He has connected his Android device to his PC and uses an Android desktop bus command to disable doze mode. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, if you're in touch with the developers, uh, I think you're in a good position to, to, to figure this out. You know, they're, they're the ones to ask because they understand the entire end-to-end -end process. Um, and they may, and you know, you, you reboot your phone once in a while just in case. Oh, I've been doing that regularly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's hard, it's impossible for me to tell where along the chain this is going on. And all I can say is this somewhat less reassuring thing that notifications are never really, you know, you wouldn't want to depend on a notification for something absolutely vital because sometimes they take their time, sometimes they never arrive. It's a complicated process. Any different models of phones do better or worse with this? Well, I think the iPhone might do better. Um, but as far as an Android device, no, I don't, I don't think any one's better than the other. Which Moto do you have? E4. Okay. So it's it's fair is that that's fairly old, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Maybe four years. Yeah. I think. Oh, that's ancient. <laughs> when it comes to smartphones, phone, that'll be a different question <laughs> to go to. I like Moto's phones. Uh, I think they're great phones. I don't think it's because it's an older phone. Yeah. But again, there's so many uh, things that could affect this. It's hard to it's hard to pinpoint which one. You're very fortunate that you're talking to the developers. Uh, I would think they would very much want to solve this. Because if it's happening to you, it's going to happen to other people, too. Well, I've asked twice about the, uh, the nighttime thing, and they just... That's your that phone. I, think, I, I can know. understand why they want to palm that off on your phone. That's, <laughs> that sounds like any, the phone. Any sites for this kind of question? Not that I know of. That's interesting. Just generalized uh, Google searches right. on notification systems and push notifications specifically. You'll see how complicated this is. And yeah. it's kind of a kludgy setup. It's not an ideal setup. Um, but that's just the way it is. You, you know, remember, you're res uh, you have to respect, on a mobile phone, you have to respect battery life. You have to respect the end user. There's all sorts of, you know, things to consider when you're making noise on somebody's phone remotely. And uh, as a result, it's kind of a, there's a lot of stuff to consider. Um, I would look at the specific app's settings. And because you're using the beta, it may be that they've done some stuff in there that's not what they're going to do in release, too. Who knows? Sorry I can't be more help, David. I, w I want your little putty tat to be able to <laughs> reach you. <laughs> we, had, we had a device, the company's gone out of business since, called Lighthouse, that had this feature. It was a sim similar idea, camera in your house. And if somebody under the age of, I think it was 12, went up to the camera and waved, it would notify you. It would say, hey, Daddy... Little Johnny wants to see, wants to talk to you. And then you could talk to him and stuff. They would actually wave at the camera. It never worked. No, no, the company's out of business. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, 888-827-5536. On we go to Micah in Maine. Hello, Micah. It's great to talk to you. And speaking of the romantics and what I like about you, you know what I like about you, Leo. Uh, I'll, my olive juice? Well, no, that you're always there for us <laughs> to answer questions, even about printers, and you don't strangle them. I don't know. I know. You know, it's funny. It's Rod Pyle, our space guy, who joins us every uh, Sunday to talk about space, who sent me that T-shirt. And then he sent me another one, uh, which I have over here. It says uh, something about my Internet being slow. I tell you. I don't. I'll take any question, Micah. Any, you know that anything at all. Well, I've got a. I may not be able to help you, but I'm, I'll take the question. Anyway. That's great. I've got many, You've got many unquestioned answers, right? Yes, that's right. And unanswered questions as well. Go ahead. That too. <laughs> well, I, you may recall that several months ago I called about the CC C Crane Wi-Fi radio yeah. and how it was uh, service was ending for it. And you got and stuff. you got me. You got me uh, a special uh, phone call. From the founder of uh, C. Crane. Yep, and Bob Crane took care of all people that he own did. that C. Crane did radio. Me. And, and I, got my, I got my new one uh, recently, this week, the CC Wi-Fi 3, which is fabulous. I wanted to report to you about Good. it. Good. But you know that 
it uses Sky Tunes, which is great, but it's also designed so that if Sky Tunes should ever go down, like Receiver did, that there is a way that you can get into the IP address from your computer and plug in streams if you can find them directly from the radio stations you want to hear. We should. And I should fill everybody in on what what happened is all of these internet radios used to use a site called Receiver as their back end, how you found the station because stations move around, and Receiver uh, went under. They're gone. Um, they, they, they knew this was coming, and Bob over at uh, C. Crane, cre cre I think he created Skytune as an alternative. But I love it that he said, we're not going to be... We're not going to be tied to Skytune. If if Skytune goes away, we'll still support, you know, uh, entering direct URL. Skytune.net is is their replacement essentially for uh, Receiver. And then yeah, he gave everybody a discount. Did he give you a whole free radio? If you ordered the radio within a certain amount of time, nice. he placed it for free. Isn't that and if great? you just owned one, he gave it to you at half price. Yeah. He, they, they, it's a, that's one of the reasons I really love Sea Crane. They stand by their uh, products. And they make great products. So, tell, so you got the Wi-Fi 3? Is that the one you got? That's what it's called, and it's working just great. And that's what I'm listening to you on right now. Oh, nice. But I do have a, you're, you're listed in Skytunes, but I do have a question for you uh -oh. in case Skytunes should ever go down. Yes. And that is, in order for you to be able to use the direct stream, that stream needs to end in either MP3 yeah. or MU3. That's right. the only right. two systems that it takes. Right. Now, some radio stations, and I won't name any offhand, have MP3 dot PLS, which ends up giving you, uh, I guess, text uh, text information. Right. The, the right. C Crane Wi Fi 3 radio won't take that. And unfortunately, the Twit network doesn't have a stream that ends in MP3 or MU3. And I'm wondering just about that in general, in terms of why stations wouldn't do that. And I'm also wondering if Twit might be able to create one. I think we might have one. I'm going to have to check with. Uh, Patrick Delahanty, who is our engineer, probably listening uh, right now. PLS is uh, a, maybe a better format because it has more information, like the song information and so forth. Uh, M3U is uh, is a uh, uh, I'm sorry, MU3 is a playlist format, as is PLS. Both playbacks are for playback of MP3 files. Um, I suspect you can convert one to the other. Um, uh, we're probably using a service that offers PLS, but might also offer an alternative to MU3. I think, I think we will. Uh, I think we'll do that. I have looked at all you how to watch, how to stream everything on the on and it the, doesn't, the Twit wiki, yeah. and it's not there. Yeah. And you can't. I tried to convert the PLS by cutting out the PLS. Well, this on, what's on the wiki is old, is old. By the way, we've replaced that with another service. This was back when the, I'm looking at the wiki link right now. Back when we did it ourselves, but we're using a service right now. Let me. I'll I'll just uh, Slack Patrick, and I'll ask him. If we have a, uh, M a you you want MU three it would be the ideal because then you get a playlist. Yeah, either M three U or MP three, and yeah. and like I said, with some of the stations that offer PLS, you, it goes MP three dot PLS. Took off the PLS, doesn't work. Can't get it to stream. So. I'm wondering if, you know, again, hoping that I can at least get Twit that way, and I'll deal with the other stations as I have to. I am slacking, which is our internal messaging system. I am slacking Patrick right now. Patrick, if he's not, you know, it is it is a Saturday. He may be taking the day off with his kid, but if he's available, he'll get back to me, and I'll let you know. Thank you for the question. It's a good question. Yeah, I, yeah we moved over. We used to do it with our own streamers, and that's what the wiki says. We had our own hardware. But we moved over to a service not too long ago. Let me just see if I can find the name of the service. Because I bet you they offer all three or, you know, any or. And there may even be. Now, there's not going to be a way to convert PLS to MU3 unless you took the stream, repackaged it, and served it yourself. And you don't want to do that, I'm sure. So. No, I'm trying to find a way to just, you know... Twit.am, say, say again, John, twit.am gives you an M3U? MU3? Oh, but it's not playing, huh? So try twit.am. That is an M3U file. Icecast. Huh. That's the mount point is... 
it's it's this is twit.am slash listen dot m three u so we do have an m we do have if it works <laughs> twit.am slash listen dot m three u slash listen dot m three u it actually says new dot twit dot am but I don't know and let me, yeah, so that's in theory, it, uh, but if it's not it's not streaming right now, maybe it's down, and I, if it is, I'll, you know, it's, I used to, I used to do all this stuff, and now I have people to do it, so I don't really know what the hell's happening anymore. Well, let me, I'll try to plug that into uh, space number 15. <laughs> and, uh, I'd like to be a button on your dial, Micah. Yeah, I just plugged it. <laughs> I just plugged it into VLC to see if it worked there, and it doesn't. Okay. It can't be opened. Okay. Um, okay. So um, let me let me uh, let me get back to you. That'd be great. Yeah. Just keep listening, I or really, I'll put it in the show notes, or you know. You, I, I really appreciate it. You, Mike, you, I appreciate you. You're great, and thank you. Have a great day. You, you have too. A good show. All right. Okay, Take care. I'm just gonna say, it doesn't work. Why, well, yes, he has been everywhere, man. He's Johnny Jett, our traveling guy who's been grounded for the last year and a half. I'm sorry to say he's tried a little traveling. But, you know, and now we're, we're, it seems like we're back uh, where we were. I don't know. Johnny Jett. Hello. JohnnyJett.com. Hello. Yeah, it's going backwards, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, not as bad in travel. You know, it's taken a little bit of a hit, but not. I was just looking at the TSA numbers, and they've taken a little bit of a dip, but... You know, school's getting back into school, uh, going back in, and um, I just think that... Yeah, there would be a normally a dip right this time travel. of year because people are uh, busy with their kids. Yeah. I mean, it was almost 2 million people crossed through TSA yesterday. Wow. In 2019, the same day was 2.5 million. And keep in mind, there's no international travelers coming from other countries, and there's no um, business travelers, really. So I think um, the numbers are pretty good in terms of people traveling i mean i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but i i follow the uh, hawaii subreddit and people are howling because ho the hospital beds are full now in queen's hospital and uh, that, that's on my um that's one of my things to talk about i just uh, one of your listeners and readers sent me a, a story and i heard it from one of my cousins lives on oahu and they're like listen this is not the time for people to be going to hawaii and I, I, unfortunately, I do think Hawaii is going to make it a lot more, a lot stricter to get in, and they're going to have to because they're an island. They, there's only so many hospital beds, and to fly out somewhere, it's five hours. Yeah, you can't you can't medevac somebody to the mainland very easily. And right now, they said they have more COVID patients now than they ever had in this article I just read. And it's and they said there's it's going to go up. It's just the beginning. So and don't bring fake COVID vaccination cards with you because you will get busted. I mean, what about those fools from Miami Beach that got busted? Yeah. You read about that? Yeah. The, the couple? Yeah. The, the, the reason why they got busted is because they had fake CDC cards for their kids that were four and five years old. <laughs> Talk about dumb. <laughs> I mean, that is beyond. <laughs> yeah, but, that's pushing um, it. That's pushing it. <laughs> but speaking of COVID, my dad's still in the hospital. Oh, he's, I'm so sorry. He's, uh, but... They say he's going to survive, and he's he's tough because he got the vaccine. So even though vaccine. he got it at the at, in his nineties, it would have been a death well, sentence before the vaccine. Good news, he's well, okay. I, I, I've been following the news in Israel, and you know we kind of model after what they're doing because they were so advanced. And my dad got the vaccine back in January. He got the first dose. Yes, yeah, starting. And to wear that's off what now. I think that happened. Yeah, I think yeah. you know I think it started wearing off. He got yeah. the Pfizer. Yeah, and he's going to need a booster, but. You know, they said because of this, he is uh, surviving. Unfortunately, one of my cousins, I have, I'm Italian, I'm half Italian, so I have a lot of cousins. Uh, he just <laughs> told me last night two of his friends just died in the last 10 oh, days. Oh, no. And both were unvaccinated. Oh, no. Yeah, get that vaccine. And we want to go were, back. We really do. Yeah, we want to go back to travel, and we really do. But uh, we got it. Safety first. Yep. But, but speaking of travel, I uh, just put in the chat room and tweeted it out. Uh, Avello Airlines, which I flew up to Sonoma a few months ago. Yes. 
they started flying, or they announced they're going to fly out of New Haven, oh, Connecticut, which is also 40 minutes from where I grew up. I live by LAX. Would that be convenient? Burbank. You mean New Haven to LA? No, LA to, fl uh, sorry, uh, New Haven to Florida, four different cities, oh. Fort Myers, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Orlando, and Tampa. But, and right now they have $59 fares. They start in November. And so if you're thinking about flying, I mean, when you live in Southern Connecticut, like I grew up, going to the New York airports is a huge hassle. So oh, yeah. I've never even been to the New Haven airport and I, I grew up so close. <laughs> oh, I've so been this there. Is a welcome, <laughs> this is definitely going to be a welcome surprise. A welcome, um, <laughs> Carrier. It's a small before, air, 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 air. It was just airport. one yeah. flight. It was the yeah. American Airlines uh, flight to Philadelphia on a regional jet. These are 737s. So this is going to be uh, great news. Yeah, they're beefing for, up Tweed uh, New Haven. They're adding some some extra terminals and stuff. I mean, you went to Yale, right? Yeah. I, we First time I came out, I flew uh, to JFK and then JFK to Tweed, which oh, was the worst. That, flight. that was the worst flight of my life because we went through a thunderstorm and those prop planes back in the uh, 70s Forget didn't that. go very high. I it's, never did it again. It's only an hour and a half drive. It's an easy drive. Yeah. I, I just didn't know any better at the time. I was a kid. What did I know? No, I understand. But because um, no, whenever I fly to Connecticut, I yeah. fly to JFK. I, yeah. I grew up 40 miles away from there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the way to do it. But it's a pain to get there, especially during a rush hour. It's incredible. Yeah. But so... Also in the travel news, there's a couple things. One, I just I, I sent you a tweet with the Emirates commercial. I assume you've seen this. You might want to do it on the commercial break. But that video, did you see that? It actually, it's a couple weeks old now. No, tell me about it. Uh, it's a 30-second commercial for them. Uh, so they kind of did a take on um, Love Actually, where the guy has all the cue cards. And yeah, he's saying, yeah, yeah. So this one, they did it because they're, they're going back to flying back to the UK now. And so they're trying to get a little play on that. But anyway, the flight attendant, who is also a, um, she is a um, what, parachute, what do you call them? You know, she, she jumps out of perfectly good airplanes. Well, no, but she, she's a professional uh, sky jumper. <laughs> Skydiver, yes. Skydiver, thank yes. you. So anyway, they got her to stand at the top of the building. I'm talking the top because you went up in the uh, Burj on the Khalifa, Burj right? Khalifa. So I'm watching the watching I'm the, the, the tweet right now. She's got the cards. It's a little breezy. She's wearing her Emirates. Oh my goodness, she's it crazy. It took five hours to climb to the top from the 160th floor. Now what's is she going to jump off? Does she have a parachute on? No, she doesn't. She's not going to jump. She's she's actually strapped in. And there was a behind the scenes video because everyone's like, this is fake. Um, but it's not. There's only, there's only a few people have done this, and I think Tom Cruise is one of them. <laughs> oh, come on. For, Tom didn't really do that. You don't risk no, a billion-dollar superstar he, he, movie star. No, he does. No? you got to give it to the guy. Okay. I, the question is why she did it. Because <laughs> she's a skydiver. Has yes, no she's fear of heights. not afraid of heights. Obviously. I mean, you can pay me to do that. Terrifying. Terrifying. But... Anyway, that's a little fun little commercial, and I thought you'd get a kick out of it. Yeah. But there is a scam going around that people need to know about. Um, because rental cars are so tight still to get, especially in Hawaii. I mean, it's very difficult to get them in, 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 during the holidays. So there's there's been all kinds of complaints with the FTC and, um, and the BBB about scam sites where people are like, you know, we have cars for you. And, you know, if it's too good to be true, it usually isn't. Also, never pay with a gift card or a debit card like they're asking people to do some of these sites. But over 2,000 people got scammed in the first three months of the year where the complaints have been logged. So make sure, you know, you go directly to a reputable com a company. And also, you know, obviously, once you book your car, you always call that car rental company and find out that it is legit. And you got to keep doing that, by the way, because a lot of the times the cars aren't even ready, even if you order them through a legitimate company. Um, you know, one of the tips people say is to call directly to that car rental center. So if you're booking on Oahu, you know, don't just call Hertz's national number. Call that direct right to the Hertz in Oahu and make sure that, you know, they're going to have that car for you. It's a crazy idea. Why don't we just stay home for a little longer? I, I, listen, that's what I'm doing, and that's because I have two unvaccinated little kids, and um, we're not messing around. I mean, yeah. we're just we're just playing it safe, and um, because of them. But we are going out once in a while, and we're being safe. We went to the Hollywood Bowl this week, my wife and I, and we are away from people, and it's a great little uh, escape. Uh, 
what a world we live in. Johnny Jet, if you want to read about travel, that's, to me, the best thing to do right now. Just read about it. Go to johnnyjet.com. It's a great website. He's got a couple of newsletters there. They're free. Get all sorts of travel information, price and fare information, and so forth. You can follow him on Instagram and Twitter, at Johnny Jet. He's got a great YouTube channel, too. Actually, that's fun for kind of uh, virtual travel, talk with travel experts about their, their trips. Um, we'll be back. We'll be back. But uh, we'll, we'll be, be back, back sooner we'll definitely be back. It's if we be, take it's care be a, now. A few months. Yeah. Johnny Jet, I'm glad that you're okay. Please, prayers for your dad. I, Thank you. I, I'm sure he's going to be fine. Just hang Thank in there, and uh, we will talk again next week. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Leo. JohnnyJet.com. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Of course, I'm not staying home. I might be regretting. We went out. Where are you going, Mexico? Uh, yeah, well, we're going to uh, see Billy Idol tonight, but it's an outdoor concert, and you have to be vaccinated or tested to go, but I'm still very nervous about that. And do you have to wear a mask or not? Well, I'm wearing a mask. I don't think you do, but I'm wearing one. So we went to the Hollywood Bowl, Hollywood Bowl on Tuesday night. Did you night, wear a mask? The mask enforcement wasn't in it. It kicked in on Friday I think if you're Friday outside. Morning. Well, that's we, we still wore one, except yeah. when we were eating. And then... Um, most people, I would say over half the people were wearing one, and this is before the mandate, so now they're all wearing one. Yeah. And, uh, but if you're if outside, you go concert, I'm not going to any not indoor busy, concerts, that's for sure. No, no, I would not be going to indoor concerts. We're, like, we're, my we're kind of up in the concert. Yeah, we're kind of up in the air about Mexico in October. It's end of October, so it's more than two months away, so I'm, I'm just going to play it by ear, but Lisa's very nervous about this. And uh, I don't, I don't know what to do. And you know, Mike, you know, Mike it, Elgin says, no, it's going to be fine. Everybody's vaccinated. But um, you know, Day of the Dead is a big, a lot of people in Oaxaca. Yeah, it's a big celebration. So I don't know. I've always wanted to do that. Me too. Me too. But, it's hard to hide my disappointment. And then of course there's a Asia cruise in January, which you say is probably not going. That's happen. not going to happen. But what I, what I do tell people, if you are going to travel, make sure you're vaccinated. Make sure that you look and see what the vaccination numbers are for the, the area you're going to, but most importantly, find out what the hospital numbers are because you do not want to go to a, a place that doesn't have beds available. I feel lucky we went to Hawaii. I feel guilty, but I feel lucky that we did it and survived it, but now I feel guilty, so. Uh, yeah, I feel the same way. We went to New York, my daughter's first flight in June to Connecticut, and, you know, we were I don't mind staying home. Masks. I'm happy staying home. I really am. <laughs> I just want to hibernate for the next three years. Well, I really want to get on a plane and go see my dad. It just of course you, you do. Of course you do. They wouldn't let you in anyway, so don't just relax. I know. You wouldn't even be able to get in. You'd have to stand. He has outside a cochlear implant. He, he has a cochlear implant. And they got it though, right? They found it. They, they found it, but they couldn't figure, for some reason, the nurses, they're short-staffed, and they couldn't, they're having problems charging it. You know, it's just like, are you kidding me? I can see my dad wilting away. If I was there, he would be so much better. But they won't let now. you in, I'm sure, right? Oh, they won't. They're, they, they said that you, you're, not, you're not allowed in. So there's no dress point going nurse. out there because there's nothing you could do. No, mm -hmm. but... Anyway, it's just, that's the worst thing about COVID. I know. Is that these people are alone. I know. I know. But thankful know. that we have technology and he has FaceTime. Yeah. When he can hear it. But anyway. All right, my friend. All Take care. Take care. See you later. <laughs> what a depressing segment. <laughs> I, I don't want it to be depressing. I, I, that's, why I, that's why I tried to give you that video of the uh, flight attendant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I should have end, I should have ended on that. No, that's all right. It would have been depressing no matter what. All right. All right. Have a good See one. Ya. Take care. Bye. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Leo Laporte, the what? The what is that sound? The tech guy. Uh thanks to our musical director, the fabulous Professor Laura, for uh spinning the discs today. Dave is on the line from La Mirada, California. Hello, David. Hi, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Okay, Leo been quite a while you gave me some good advice on a similar subject maybe five or ten years ago and oh, wow uh, what i wanted to do is get your opinion on uh, a better host that i have for my domain name uh i had a business and i scaled it down 
And uh, I've been with this host for like seven years, and now I, I made the mistake of paying for five years, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm nearing the end of that. But they have screwed me up so good. Uh, what it was at first was that uh, I, I was on the five years, this last John, and after about three years, I uh, I had bought their website builder or something, and then I decided I wasn't going to use it. So I called them up and I asked for a refund. They gave me a partial refund. But what I didn't know was, uh, apparently, they say I was reduced from one web, or excuse me, one uh, email service to two, and it was my wife on the other one. And uh, she was, this was right around Christmas time, she was a secret Santa go-to. And uh, they just cut her Ugh. because <laughs> they just got rid of her Let me her guess. Email. Go, Daddy. And they didn't say a word, no warning, nothing. And I called them up, went round and round with them, and uh, you know, so I figured, well, I'll make the best of it for the next, you know, two or three years, and I have. But they're they're very they're really big, and they're very unresponsive. Let me guess. And go, Daddy. Go, Daddy. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Yeah. But, uh, I guessed it. Absolutely. Yeah. You guessed it yeah. right off. So and first thing I understand is there's two different things going on. There's a domain name registry that uh, GoDaddy is a domain registrar, that, uh -huh. but there are many of these. All they do is register your domain name, make sure it gets in the phone book, and that's about 10 bucks a year. That's all they do. It varies depending on the domain name, but that's, right. that's the basic. Then there is web hosting which is a completely separate thing. GoDaddy com confuses the two because they do both. A lot of companies do, and now apparently they also do email. So you've got one company doing all three, but you don't need to. Your domain name registrar can be anybody. Uh, in fact, I generally say it's fine to use GoDaddy as a registrar. I just wouldn't use them for, as you are, hosting an email. I would use another service for that. I like to separate. There's an e It's easy if you put them all together, right? It's one button. But you yeah. can see the problem. If you change your plans, you might be changing your capabilities without realizing it. And all of a sudden, you don't have any email. Something like that. I'm back there again, and I'm right at the end of my five years, but I'm not quite. I'm yeah. At, uh, so what do you, what do you, you, you've got a domain name. I would leave my domain name with GoDaddy. There's no point in moving that. But you don't need to buy web hosting or email from them. I would go to a different company for those. Is it hard to change your... No, it's easy. You're not going to change really anything. You're just going to tell GoDaddy... Stop hosting my site. And then the co only complicated thing is then you have to tell them, okay, and now my site is over here. But that usually the new hosting company will help you with that. I like WordPress.com. They're very simple. You don't, it's a very easy. What, what is your site for? It's, you're not in business anymore. It's just a personal well, site or? Well, we've got a, yeah, we got a little misunderstanding. It's per, it's personal. Now I, uh, yeah. originally it was my business and I retired from that. So I keep scaling it down, scaling yeah, yeah. it down. Yeah, but, but you want to have a website. I understand. Yeah. No, I don't even need the website. Oh, you don't care. You're Email, just going to. And I want to keep my domain name. Yes. Name. So. You don't lose your domain name. You can transfer it, but you don't need to. GoDaddy's fine as a registrar. So you're just going to turn off the e the website. You don't need that anymore. But you still want the email. I would go to another company for email. I use a company called Fastmail. Okay. And they do they're, they're, all they do is email. They're not a registrar. They don't do websites. They're an email company. I think there's an advantage to that. They're really good. Uh, but okay. you could also have it be Gmail, which is free. Um, I spend like 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks a year for fast mail. But uh, you could have a free site with, with Gmail. And it's all about telling GoDaddy where your mail is from now on. And that's an easy thing to do. But GoDaddy has a system for doing that. It, it all boils down to something called DNS, the domain name system. And really, that's how GoDaddy started, was a domain registrar. You make up a domain you want. And, you know, uh, Dave's great website dot com and you go to them and you give them 10 bucks a year and that's the name of the site and they make sure it's in the phone book and that's that's it. They they end up upselling you and all this other stuff. It's one of the reasons I don't like GoDaddy is because after you do that, then they go, oh, and would you like a website? No, would you? But you don't have to do that. You don't have to have well, them with there. Okay. I found out over a period of time that all of their uh, if you call in for technical support, which I rarely do, but have uh, all of and they. Uh, advertise this that all of, you know they have super service. Well, all of their agents are salesmen. They're all on yeah. commission. 
Yeah. And now it's even worse than that. Yeah. They're all on commission overseas. Yeah. That's how you get big. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, you know, the thing is so complicated. I want to go back yeah. to ham radio and forget all. Yeah. This. Yeah. Yo, if you're a ham, you can figure this stuff out. So, Keep Go Daddy is a registrar. They're fine for that, and it's cheap. It's ten bucks a month. You don't don't let them upsell you on anything. And then the only complication, and you're going to have to do it once, is you're going to have to change your settings on GoDaddy to point to your email provider. Frankly, you could just use Google, just use Gmail. That's free, and it, and you just there's settings in GoDaddy to to have GoDaddy's mail. You, GoDaddy does mail, but but that's not a part of a registrar's job. A registrar is just does one thing: registers a domain name. GoDaddy decided they could make more money by offering these uh, ancillary services, but you don't have to use them for it. You don't okay. have to use them for it. So, so you really the only complicated thing, and you'll find this on the web. You're going to go into your settings on GoDaddy. It's called DNS settings. Uh, they probably, uh, for a variety of reasons, are not interested in you doing this. So they they may make it overly complicated. Well, since I'm near the end of my five years, should I just get someone else, period? Or You can. So transferring a domain name is another way to do this. You can have somebody else take your domain name, transfer it over. But that's even more complicated because uh, to prevent people from hijacking your domain name, they have locks on it and things like that. Right, right. But you can unlock it and you could say, I'm going to transfer it. What you'll do is you'll get... You'll go to a different registrar. There's lots of them. Uh, Google has their own domains. Uh, I use a company called in, out of Canada called Hover.com. There's many, many, many of these. But let's say you're going to use Hover. You'll go to Hover. You'll say, I want to transfer a domain name. They'll say, okay, we need a code from GoDaddy. You go to GoDaddy. You say, I want to transfer my domain name. They said, okay, here's the code. We don't want you to do this. Here's the code. Then you give it to Hover. There's a process, and it's all to protect you from getting your name hijacked. That was a big problem in the early days. Mm -hmm. I see. But there, it's sure. totally possible to do that. I don't think you need to do that. I think you can turn off your services from, from GoDaddy. Just well, keep, the re keep the name registered there. Yeah. If, well, one one last little thing I'd like to get in. Uh, I'm right at the end of my five years. You know, I'm within yeah. three months or four, yeah. whatever. Well, what they did a couple of months ago, they said, well, uh, they're changing their, uh, I guess you call it a client or what, whatever, uh, over to Microsoft 365 from right. the, from the right. web space or whatever they right. had. Right. And the stuff they had worked fine for yeah. all these years. Right. Now they say you've got to... You've got to uh, uh, by 360. Just get a, yeah, guess what? Yeah. Do you think they get a commission on that? Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It is just at the right time. Yeah. Where, uh, just cancel it all. Keep the domain name is all you need. Just say, I don't want any of that. I just want you to be the my domain registrar. And if you don't want to, you can transfer it to somebody else. Absolutely. It's one of the reasons I don't like Hover, because they, they're notorious for the upsell. Hover or? I mean, Go, uh, GoDaddy. Hover's good. Oh. Hover.com doesn't do all that. They have an email service. You can use their email service if you want. Um, and it'll be, and it'll, the beauty of this is by having registered the domain name, you don't have to tell anybody anything. Your mail will go to the new service, but they'll still be using the old address, franksgreatemail.com or whatever it is. So that's the beauty of doing what you've done. You did the right thing. Hang on for a second. I got to take a break, but hang on. I'll, I'll walk you through this. So all of this is kind of crazy complicated, I understand. Um, and, and one of the reasons, Dave, that people do what, they, what you did is because it's simple. I have one company, they're doing all of it. But as you can see, when they change stuff around, it's not so simple anymore. Yeah, they got me down to where they said, uh, uh, they said, okay, we're giving you, uh, actually, I found this out after two months. They said, we're going to give you two months of free uh, yeah. Uh, 365. Yeah. And uh, when I didn't, uh, after that, when I didn't buy it, hey, they cut it off. Yeah. I mean, they just oh, you didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an option, Dave. We're giving it to you. <laughs> yeah, I know. But they didn't tell me that before. And they didn't tell. It was part of the deal, you know, originally. They are going to host my... Uh, my domain well, name, and uh, you get the free uh, email service. Yeah, now we want you to pay. Yeah, yeah, but it's uh, so. Um, <laughs> Gmail is free, right? Right, I use it. Okay, so you can have whatever that domain is that you use go to your Gmail account. Okay, and that's that's probably what I would do. Then and then just tell uh, tell um, GoDaddy I don't want to pay for anything else. 
you know, I just want to pay for my domain name. I don't want to pay for email. I don't want to pay for web hosting. I don't need that stuff anymore. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. And then, and then the only trick now is, and there, you can find the instructions on GoDaddy will explain this, but the only trick is now you have to tell GoDaddy when mail comes to davesgreatemail.com, whatever you registered, forward that over to Gmail. I see. And they will. Because oh. that's their job. That's what they're that's what they are regi that's why they're a registrar. That's what registrars oh, do. Oh, okay. So they're, they're supposed to be doing that. That's that's yeah, and that's the minimum I would that's the maximum I would let them do. That's the minimum they have to do, and it's the maximum I'd let them do. Uh there so don't, so the way it works is there's thirteen big phone books in the sky run by ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, is a non governmental organization in charge of the internet. They're the ones who say, you know, this domain name's in use. You can't have it, that kind of thing. But they don't want to do all that themselves. So what they do is they have basically have affiliates. They call them registrars. They have to satisfy certain requirements. And there are, there are thousands of these all over the world. And you go to the registrar to buy a domain name. And what they do is they tell ICANN, okay, Dave's got Dave's great email com, And they put that in the 13 big phone books. After it's in the phone book, everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. So the registrar is an intermediary between you and ICANN. And okay. you don't have to use any one registrar. In fact, they have a system for moving to a different registrar, as I mentioned. The registrars make that complicated. Ostensibly because they don't want somebody to hijack your name, but mostly because they don't want to lose your business. <laughs> and Hover, I'm not Hover, I'm sorry, GoDaddy is notorious because they don't make much money on the registry business. You know, that's 10 bucks a year for a .com. They don't make much money on it. But but what they got now is they got a live one. And so now you basically, you're a, that's a lead generation system for them. Now their entire job to make money is to upsell you all sorts of stuff you don't need. Well, they've got it all. Yeah, <laughs> and they have salesmen, right? So that's the <laughs> Absolutely. trick. Yeah, and it's kind of a honeypot because once you're in there, it's hard to get out. But if you're very clear, look, you're my registrar. That's all I want you to do. I need it to go along with the registrar. There is a, a dashboard called your DNS settings. This is the system, the domain name system. So the DNS settings in there, and this is a little geeky, it's a little tricky. In there are settings that say mail goes here, websites go here. And so by, by GoDaddy doing all of that, you don't have to mess with it. But everybody understands it's complicated. And if you said, I still want to have a, word a website, you go to WordPress or Squarespace, they have systems. They say, okay, you go in your DNS and you type this, and it'll work. Same thing with the email provider. They say, okay, go in your DNS, it'll work. Um, so, uh, in fact, I have ha Fastmail do my DNS, which makes that all much easier. I, all I do is I go to Hover every year and renew the name for 10 bucks a year. And uh -huh. that's all you should ever do to GoDaddy is just have them make sure that name's in the phone book, given their tiny little amount of money. They're, the only bad thing about them is they're going to always try to upsell you. That's, their, that's how they make well, money. Well, I won't have anything to do with them if I get rid of the email. You can get, you can get, you can get rid of them entirely, as I said, by moving. Uh, or you can keep them and just use it for that, and you won't have to. You won't ha deal with them at all. They'll just send you a bill every year, or five years, whatever the term you set for. for uh -huh. And it shouldn't be much. Is it dot com you have? Yeah, it's yeah. A, dot coms it's are a, dot, com. dot coms are cheap. Dot com should be a roughly ten to fifteen dollars a year. Oh, okay, yeah, that's that sounds like what I knew. Yeah, and originally. then the rest of it. <laughs> The rest of it, you know, the, all the ev every other stuff, they're trying to make money on you because they don't make much money in ten to fifteen dollars a year. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah, so they're, it's a, they see this all as a lead generation system. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem with them. That's why I don't recommend them. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. But they're fine. They're fine as a registrar as long as you understand all that and you just go, no, I don't want to buy anything else. Thank you. Yeah, it makes you feel cheap, but on the other hand, uh, <laughs> it makes me feel good. Because yes. The, 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 I mean, they just like... Oh, they're they terrible. On my wife, just bingo. They I'm never told us yeah. that I only get one email address. They just clicked it off That's right, right at Christmas time. That's right. I mean, That's right. I mean, I was as mad as a wet hen. With uh, one of the reasons I use Fastmail, and it's a little more expensive. It's Like I said, it's 30 or 40 bucks a year. Um, 
one of the reasons I use them is I have unlimited email addresses. So I have uh, a special address that I use. I'm not going to give it out. I don't want people to send me email. But right, right. let's say it's leoville.com. That was my old address. I still use it. <laughs> so leoville.com. And I can have Lisa, my wife, at Leoville. I can have Henry, my son, at Leoville. In fact, I do. Abby at Leoville. Everybody. And I can have as many of those as I want. What I do with this new address is when I sign up for something, I make the address be the company I signed up with. So I have an, my Verizon email address is verizon at leoville.com. So that way I can filter it easily, right? I know who it came yeah. from. And if they sell it to anybody, I will also know where it came from, who they sold it to. Oh. <laughs> Clever, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Put my call sign in there too. What the hell? Yeah. I, you know what? I have w6twt.com.net.org. dot org. That's a traveling wave tube, by the way. Is it? <laughs> Come on, you, you've heard I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's a travel. I never thought of that. It is. They still use them for, uh, and they have for quite a number. I bet of you Bob Heil like knew power. that. Or uh -huh. Gord, I bet you Gordy, Gordon knew that and did that on purpose to me. Because they arranged uh -huh. my vanity call sign. Yeah, I was going to say, is it vanity? Yeah. Uh -huh. W6TWT. Yeah, yeah, traveling wave tube. Uh, we, we used them in uh, X-band radar. Oh. Uh, for a really lightweight. So I'm not going to say tango. I mean, I'm talking. I'm not going to say tango whiskey tango anymore. I'm going to say tub whiskey six traveling wave tube. <laughs> not too many people know what I'll it go, is. What? Guess, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, just a, uh, it's like you know they had magnetrons, klystrons, and not right. tra and then traveling wave tubes. And so my so when I registered word. at the FCC, it's FCC at w6twt.org. So that way I know, you know, it's easy to keep track of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I it's, like that. I like having that kind of flexibility with email uh, because email is important to me. So I don't mind spending the, you know, yeah, actually, well, you know, the money for it. But you can get it for, you already have Gmail. You get your wife have a Gmail account. We, we've already got them, but yeah, uh, yeah. We, I, you know what I use mine for? What? Is, uh, uh, we have a remote site over in, uh, well, we built a second oh, neat. in uh, Arizona. Oh, neat. And... Uh, that's a ham for you. That's a remote site, he calls it, not a second home. <laughs> well, it, it, it turned out to be a pretty nice home once we decided we were going to build it. We hey, Dave, I got to run. Seven, seven, three, my friend. Okay, Leo. W6TWT out. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches. Domain registries, domain name systems, all of that stuff. I like getting geeky on it. Eight, <laughs> on you. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, outside that area. Call me via Skype website, techguylabs.com. This might be, for many people, we were talking to Dave about uh, domain names and all that. And this might be the most complicated thing anybody does with the... You, you know, a computer is set up a domain name and have custom email and a custom website. It is pretty complicated, I understand. And, it, and it's designed by engineers for engineers. It's not, it's not designed for humans. So I, I, it's, a, it's a complicated system. But if you can understand it, it's really uh, useful to, to know how it all works. There's a domain registrar. They're, they're approved by the Inter Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. They're in charge of the whole names and numbers thing, the dot-coms, all that stuff. They go out and they have basically franchises, affiliates, that will register domains for you. So GoDaddy's one, Hovers dot another is another. Go Google has their own domain registrar, lots of them. There's hundreds and hundreds of them. And you can go to any one of them and... Uh, the, the prices are not fixed, so you, you can shop around. But generally, a dot-com address is about 10 to $15 a year. Not a month, a year. It's cheap. Buck a month, thereabouts. It's cheap. Some, some specialized domain names like dot pizza are more expensive. Dot biz is more expensive. But dot com's pretty cheap. Once you get that, you own it. But the registrar's job is to charge you every year for that or... You know, you can sign up for longer. And then to make sure that it gets into the big phone books run by ICANN. There's 13 of them. They, they call them because they're engineers. They don't want to call them anything a human would understand. The canonical name servers. <laughs> these canonical name servers, these 13, 
are the phone book for the entire internet. Everything has to be in there or your browser can't find it. So the registrar, the affiliate's job is to feed that back to ICANN so they put that in the phone book. That's all they do. That's it right there. They have, there are settings associated with every domain name. There's, you know, the A, there's C names and AAA and MX records and all these settings that make, again, engineers can't make it easy. So they're complicated looking, but those settings, just like knobs on a, a dashboard, there's those settings determine what happens when people go to that domain name. What happens when they go to the big phone books in the sky and say, what is yahoo.com? Those DNS settings say, well, if, if they're going to a website, that's the C name, then go here. 192.168.1.1. If they're going, if it's, oh, if it's an MX record, that's email. MX record, then they're going here. That's gmail.com, that kind of thing. So all those settings are associated with your domain record, which is stored at your registrar, which is passed along to ICANN. Does that make any sense? It is very complicated. I understand. Probably, as I said, the most complicated thing you'll, you'll deal with. But it's worth it if you, you know... Having your own domain name for email, having your own website. I host my own website. Probably not convenient to host your own email. There's some pitfalls there. Uh, but it's, you know, I pay for uh, email from a company called Fastmail, but you can get it from free from others like Outlook.com, which is Microsoft, or Yahoo.com, which who knows who that is. I don't know who owns Yahoo anymore. Gmail.com. I know they're owned by Google. And those are all free. They're free because they put ads in there, right? Another reason why I like to pay. Uh, there are specialized uh, email services like Proton Mail where they encrypt it so it's a little more secure. Uh, there's lots of choices out there. I used to one, use one called Island Mail because I, <laughs> I like the name. <laughs> Island Mail. But a fast mail is my preferred server now. They're from Australia and I think they do a good job. Uh, anyway, I, I, I'm probably just confusing the whole subject. Forget I said anything. Let's go to Diane in Chicago. She's always good for some fun. Hello, Diane. Hi, Leo. How are you? I am great. How are you these days? Uh, divorcing uh, Google and everything that it has. You're finally breaking up with Mr. Big. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they... Um, enticed everybody into their services and then they changed the rules in the middle of the game. Welcome to the technology world. Which <laughs> particular part of the, what Google's doing you don't, don't you like? My drive. Oh, the Google Drive, especially oh we talked last time we talked about this with the photos. Yeah, they're not free anymore. Yeah, yeah. well, I had many MP3s stored there and the capacity the capacity became too full. Yeah, yeah. And so now I want to delete them completely, but I'm having a bit of a problem because, hold on a minute. I have to put these glasses on. Jeez, I'm 21 again. <laughs> they, okay. don't they don't warn you about that, do they? You know, so, when you hit 40, suddenly you're not going to be, re all, all the menus are going to be really dark. Yes. Really hard to read. Yeah, they don't warn you about that. Okay. I have copies of them on my Android Note 9. Oh, good. I have copies on my SD card. And oh, good. So you, you, have, you have all of your music backed up locally, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, but now I want to um, delete them and get them out of my drive, but I'm having problems in doing that. Did you upload it when it was Google Music? Is that why they have all your music? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did the same thing because it was nice. for At the time, it was free. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden, it's not free anymore. Right. That's when they changed the rules. And yeah. The game. Yeah. Um, the real question is, where do they put this music? <laughs> Because it doesn't just show up on your Google Drive, does it? As like, well, here's the folder with all your music. Well, you know, my music are individual MP3 files, and so I. Oh, you didn't. So you didn't. You didn't let them upload it using Google Music. You actually physically uploaded it to Google Drive. 
Right. And ah. so now I'm trying to get... So you uploaded it then to a folder you know. I mean, you can go see that folder, right? Right. The folder is my drive. Well, uh, but inside my drive, there will be... Are there just a bunch of music? You didn't put well, it in no. sub subfolders at all? Well, it's called my drive and MP3s. So there's a folder inside my drive called MP3s. Exactly. Okay. You can right click on MP3s, and a menu is going to pop up, and it's going to at the very bottom have a trash can that says remove. Mm hmm. That will delete it. Now, it'll move it to trash first, so you might then go to trash because all the items go there first and then empty the trash. But uh, that's just to protect you because after a few months, it'll get emptied anyway. Months? Well, I don't know what the time limit is on trash, how long before it, it empties. Try, let's see. Items in trash are deleted forever after 30 days. All right. But if you open the trash, you can empty the trash, which, by the way, when it comes to Mr. Big, is a very good feeling. You press that empty the trash and no more scrubs. You're gone. Is, okay. Do you have Destiny's Child, No Scrubs is one of the songs? Don't delete that. That's a good song. No. <laughs> I, have, I have many songs, but... Um, <laughs> Blue, Blue, Blue Blay, Michael. Oh, Blue Michael Blay. Blue Blay, I love him. He said, got such yes. a nice voice. Yeah. So and, yeah, and, yeah. And but just make it. sure. I want you to make sure you've got copies of all of that. You know, play them just to make just spot check and make sure that you can, because I don't want you to lose your music. But you can, oh, yeah. you can right click on any folder in Google Drive, select the trash can where it says remove. Say remove. It'll move it to the trash can. Then if you go to trash can, it'll be deleted after thirty days. That thirty days is to give you you know, some time to think it over. But you can mm -hmm. manually, you can press the empty trash button mm -hmm. and, and it'll delete forever is what it says. It'll They'll be gone. They won't occupy any more space on your drive. You won't have to pay for it anymore. Can I right click on each individual MP3 file? You can, although if you've got a lot of songs, it's going to take a while. That's why I asked about the folders because folders are faster. But yes, you can do it with folders or individual files. Same thing, right click on them. All right. Now, will I hear this information that you're telling me um, after we get off the phone someplace? <laughs> yes, it will be at techguylabs.com. You've been there, haven't you? Many times. Many times, says Diane. And how can I become a member there or something? Oh, you want to join? Well, now, look, okay, let me explain how that all works. So the radio show's free. The website is free. There's no membership necessary. My podcast network has members but you, if you don't listen to any of my other podcasts, you don't need it. There's no reason to join. But if you wanted ad-free versions of all those other shows, including this one, that's at Club Twit, which is twit.tv slash Club Twit. You're a very nice person for giving me a chance to plug that. And, and, and listen, I want you to stay around till you're 125, and I'm just... I'm tired, I'm just, Diane. No, no, no. I'm please tired. Say, no, please, please, please don't, please don't ever D say that. Dan, I'm not going to ask you how old you are because that's a gentleman would never ask anything like that. But I suspect you're, you know, you, you're older than 40. We know that. Maybe after right. after a while, did you ever retire? Are you still working? Oh, no, no, no. I did 38 years as a high school librarian. Oh. And now you're retired. Yes. I retired the year that the plane went into the Twin Towers. Oh, a long time ago. You've been retired. So how's retirement been? More than wonderful, except I have my fifth passport, and now I can't go any place. I and know. I'm that's planned. frustrating, isn't it? So yeah, that's right. I, I forgot. We've talked about this before. You used your retirement to see the world. Right. And and I've been inside of the Arctic Circle. I've been down <sighs> to Antarctica. So jealous. And 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 I wanted to go to Russia and New Zealand, but I can't go any place. I like know, I know, I know. Soon, well, someday. Well, I've, had, <laughs> I've had two doses of Pfizer. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, me too. Soon. Let's hope everybody else yes. gets it together and we can see the world. I think eventually that's going to happen. Now, Diane, I'll tell you why I am not retired yet. I'm working. 
until we come up with a way that I can go to the Arctic Circle and still do the radio show from there. At that point, <laughs> at that point, I will do it, and then I'll travel, and I, I will guess I won't be retired, but I won't be stuck here in the studio. Then I'll do it. How about that? I'm glad that I, I went to Iran. I never went to Afghanistan. No, I think that's probably all right. I actually shed tears this morning. Isn't that sad? What's going on? It's so oh, tragic. It's, it is. It so is. So tragic. It is. But we can't save the world. We don't have. We can't. There's so many problems. We can save as many as we can. But oh Lord. I pray that the mindset of the Taliban will be changed. Oh, I agree. Will, I agree. They, they don't want to practice seventh generation Islam. Oh, I know. It's so sad. I know. Diane, you're a smart person. It's always a pleasure talking to you. All I right, promise I will not retire as long as you keep listening. How about that? I will keep listening every Saturday and Sunday, and I'm so appreciative and grateful that you are there. Oh, bless you, Diane. You're the greatest. I always enjoy talking to you. Have a great day. Okay, love. All Thank right. You. Take care. <laughs> I just I just adore Diane. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> no scrubs allowed. Not even those Google scrubs. Chris on the line from, oh, it's Old Home Week. Hi, Chris. Leo Laporte, the tech guy from Miami. Well, here we are. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm great, Chris. How are you? Well, I'm, you know, I'm really crushing it. But you know what? I think no matter how many cups I'm in, I cannot top Diane. Well, Isn't she amazing? I love Diane. Oh, oh she's going to be. She's the one who said she loves this was many, uh, many moons ago. She said, I love my smartphone like I love a man. <laughs> I said, okay, Diane. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that one. <laughs> I don't know. There's nowhere to go. Just, just to admire it. Just to admire it. <laughs> oh, my God. So, um, yeah, you know, be careful where you're traveling, you know, because I've been, uh, there's a lot going on. Oh, my gosh. How are things in Miami? I'm telling you, we're crushing it down here. I mean, oh, the good. weather has been hot. I've been out running. You know, oh, good. One degree temperatures, getting a tan, calisthenics, going to the gym, working out. <laughs> you know, the usual. It's, you're a coffee. You're what we call a coffee achiever, Chris. I really have to be. I wish those ads were still on. Those are old ads, but I think. I know, but the, sometimes the good stuff is the old stuff. I right? just I just read uh, some very positive uh, information about coffee drinkers and their mental acuity. Oh. It's, oh. it's good for your thinking. Yes, especially our coffee, because it's got the Ganoderma and the uh, <laughs> other ingredients that are in the coffee, which help with everything. It's got shrooms. It, it's it's got what shrooms. a body wants. Yes. It is. And, and I figured, well, you know, I was saying to Kim, I now figured out a new way to do this. So at breakfast, I'll do three cups easy, okay? Then three days ago, I'm looking at my coffee pot, and I'm like, I've got this Yeti thermo mug and i'm like okay so i made a full pot of coffee three missing from there put the rest in the thermal mug put the thermal mug in the refrigerator now i can have one long cup of coffee <laughs> all day this is great it's my grandma used to do that she'd percolate coffee it was kind of weak but she'd yeah. drink it all day it was on the stove and she'd just drink it all day i'm telling you my coffee machine is so clean it's spick and span you know Look, how do you make your coffee is it drip what do you like um, well, I've got, I've got the instant, which is the, uh, that's, you know, the, that one there is just one cup at a time. Then I have the ground coffee, which I use my, my, uh, coffee press on, or I'll use the dress. Yeah. I like yeah. the coffee press. That's how we make it. We have the arrow press, press it right through on that one. Oh, it's so much better than using the coffee, but I just, I'm looking at this Yeti. Chris, you ought to do a coffee podcast, Chris. I really should. And you can, and you're going to be right in there with I'll me. be on it. Kim, I got to have backup with Lisa. I'll be on it. Yeah. Yep. I think we can crush this. Yeah. So I'm trying to get Lee. I'm trying to get Miss Kim to come to Miami, and she's like, "Well, I'll think about it." And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> let's look at what you have versus what I have." We're, have we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait until uh, maybe next year, but maybe maybe then. I like Miami. It's a great city, but I think we'll stay home for a little while longer. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More calls right after this. You didn't even. You didn't even get to your question, Chris. <laughs> we didn't even get to the question. You didn't even get to the question. Did you have a question? I did have a question. Yes, I did call. Well, I wanted to find out something in regards to um, the new IMAX. Yes. Okay, so 
It, I'm not. I'm not worried about the cost. It's right now. It's one thousand six ninety nine, but that comes with the eight gigs, the five twelve. If if I go four years, should I go to sixteen gigs and one terabyte? I mean, I'm yeah. Not, I don't if you wanted to maximize uh, the length of time you could have that iMac, I would. I I think there's a lot of evidence you don't really need um, more than eight gigs. Remember, this is a very different kind of platform and so while on an intel device i would certainly say 16 gigs but uh the way the apple's using the memory it's it's a unified memory access it's so fast i think there's a lot of evidence that eight gigs is sufficient except for some specialized uh things storage. so you, you, no internal storage right just a little bit but everything external right but the terabyte i think i would get because yeah you okay. want you want a decent amount of storage but it's the it's the <laughs> ram that you can't change you can always get fast external storage I mean, you may not like it. The beauty of that iMac is how clean it is, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like to go out about three or four years. I'm not going to keep buying one of these things every year to please them. So it's not going to happen. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I watch a lot about what you do, too. You, you move it around the grid, but you're like, well, I'm not going to get the premium Apple Watch. I'm not going to get this. I'm, I'm looking now. At, I'm looking at – I just ordered the new Samsung Watch and the flip phone. I'm, I want to give, oh, right. give Android another chance. So, oh, okay. yeah, but, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, uh, I think the iMac is great. There will be probably a more powerful iMac n early next year, if not late this year, because uh, that. that one's so yeah. small, right? That's only 24 mm -hmm. inches. Almost certainly they're going to do a 32 inch to replace the 27 inch. So I wait? if you like a big I screen, know. I think if you could wait a few months I, and you want a big screen, yes. I'd rather you get one first, and then I see what you're doing. And then <laughs> I, I, drop I will get one, and then I'll let you know. <laughs> that's a good idea, because that's what we do, you and I, right? You, you do that. I buy it, then you, the you first, see. Then yeah, yeah, I spend the money first. <laughs> Chris, have a great day. Thank you, Leo. Take care. <laughs> yeah, I think the 8 gig, it's interesting. That's what's interesting about this M1 platform is because it's unified memory architecture, the memory is on the same chip as the processor because of the way the operating system works, a variety of reasons. It seems to be 8 gigs goes a longer way on an M1 than it would on an Intel. Is it enough? Depends what you do uh, and how big your files are and things like that. So. I just, I mean, for future-proofing, I, I like the idea of getting 16 gigs because you cannot upgrade it. It's just not upgradable. That's the problem. Leo Laporte shining a flashlight on that menu. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Are you ready to go to Portugal? I sure am. John's on the line. Hey, John. Hey, Leo. How's it going? Are you calling from Portugal, Portugal? I sure am. Nice. Where in Portugal are you? I'm in the Algarve. Oh, yes. We went to, uh, that's the only place I've ever been in Portugal, is the Algarve, down in, on the coast, the southern coast. But it's beautiful. Yeah, we're on the southern coast where they say the weather's like San Diego, where yeah. we moved from. So nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. So when did you move there? We moved here, I moved here um, about a month ago. Yeah. Did I talk to you before you went? Yeah. Okay, you're the guy. So you did it. I did it. We did it. Congratulations. Yeah, we talked a few months we ago. Wait. You said we're moving to Portugal. We're going to retire to Portugal. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Are you, is it, does it, I mean, it's early days, but you feel good about it? Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. Nice. Yeah. The people are super welcoming. Cost of uh, living is great. The cost of living is great. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, we were pretty uh, economical with our wine before you know a good trader joe's bottle <laughs> for five or six bucks i bet you can but get some pretty you can get even better wine here for two dollars yeah i bet the wine's very very good there yeah it's really good so, we're, we're big fans yeah, of uh, of uh, portuguese wine and porto of course wow nice yeah. well i'm glad to, you know that's a kind of gutsy thing to do but uh, it sounds like it's working for you which is nice that's great yeah yeah it's wonderful here so what and, can I do and, for you? Uh, and and you can still hear your favorite radio show even yeah. in Portamao. It's great. Yeah, I still get, I still, uh, I still listen to you. And I was like, but I was uh, filling with my computer tonight because it's you know, what is it, nine thirty here, and 
I uh, I had plugged in a I bought the wrong keyboard. I bought like a Spanish layout keyboard. Yeah. And didn't think much didn't think much of it. Unplugged it, and then I was just using my laptop keyboard. Yeah. Because I, I use my laptop like a, like a docking station kind of thing. I have a, a, a monitor hooked up, and I wanted another keyboard in the mouse and everything. And then on this last Windows update, the kind of the automatic update, it says, "Hey, do you want to restart now?" I did it, and now it's to this blue screen. Not quite of death, but it says BitLocker. Uh oh. the recovery key to get going again. What? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Windows 10. What? And then it says recovery ID to identify your key, blah, 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 blah. For more information on how to retrieve this key, go to aka.ms.recovery.keypad. Did you even know that BitLocker was turned on? No. Yeah, okay, so BitLocker is the full disk encryption that, off, that Microsoft offers in Windows Pro. Uh, you have Windows Pro? You don't know. I don't know because I, I have a Dell XPS 13. Yeah, it must have come with Windows Pro. You wouldn't have BitLocker. So I like BitLocker. I leave it turned on. But one of the weird things about BitLocker is it uses uh, certificates, which is a perfectly acceptable way to do it, to unlock and lock it. If you didn't make a backup copy of your certificate onto a USB key, you might be in trouble. When you when you first, <laughs> it's weird because you didn't turn on BitLocker, so this may not be helpful. But when you first turned on BitLocker, it should have said, "Would you like me to save a copy of your key of your certificate on your Microsoft account?" Which I always say yes to, because uh, for this very reason. But you don't remember ever turning it on. Do you think it would have defaulted? To, would the default have been yes? Because I do have that Microsoft account. Yeah, my, yeah. So, the first thing I would do is look in your Microsoft account. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Uh, if, if by any luck it's it's been saved there, search for BitLocker recovery keys, and with any luck, oh boy, I hope it's there, because otherwise, <laughs> um. You know, unless you... It's factory reset time. Yeah, it's factory <laughs> reset time. That's the weird... I might have come with BitLocker turned on. If it did, then they most certainly would have... Well, I don't know. This is interesting. I guess Dell must... Because you never... It was a higher-end higher XPS 13 that was on sale. I would have never paid. It was like a $1,200 computer, but then it was on sale for like 800 bucks. So I went for it because I was just going to go with the least expensive... But I didn't know if it had some. Yeah, well, you know, um, you know enterprise it, version of Windows. It, it does. It has Windows Pro on it because BitLocker requires Windows Pro, um, which is fine. It's only ninety bucks over the regular home Windows. Uh, it has a few features. The big, the most important feature, frankly, is BitLocker. I do solid state drives leak information even if you erase them. So I always recommend if you're getting a computer with a solid state drive or a phone or anything else to do encryption before you use it. BitLocker is the way to do it on a Microsoft device. I, I'm going to guarantee you, if it came to the turned on, there was some point when you set up the machine where you gave it your Microsoft account, and that's how you log in, and it must have then turned on BitLocker and saved it. I, I can't imagine there's any other way to do it, because otherwise you, you'd be out of luck. You'd, yeah, you'd be erasing us. So, but isn't that strange? That in the update is when it happened, you know, and it, and it and it's saying something about keyboard now. I don't know what. Yeah, that's that, interesting. That you know, your keyboard does have memory, but I don't think I'm sure the BitLocker certificate is not stored in your keyboard. That <laughs> would not make any sense. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow, very interesting. I'm going to guess that Dell enables it, but but they, they couldn't turn it on until you actually set up your computer. And at which point they probably automatically saved it to the account that you used to set up your computer. So on another computer or a phone, log into your Microsoft account and look for BitLocker recovery keys. I'm 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 going to swear they're there. If they're not, then I'm sorry. You're going to have to format and reinstall. That is. And what this screen says, though, does say recovery key ID to identify your key, and then it gives a long. Looks like an old activation key for like yeah. you know yeah what it is you know, is it's a it's a public key crypto system so there's a certificate and uh, when you f when you set up Bit BitLocker it will give you an option to either save that certificate locally onto a USB drive you need to save it 
uh, or to save it in your Microsoft account. Because if something goes wrong, you need it to recover. You are are you logged into your um, machine normally? Yes. And have but you're not able to log into it. No, no, it's just that the yeah. screen. Yeah. But did it ask for your uh, Microsoft account and password? No. Nope. No. It was, like a, it was like an update, and it's just dark, and then I hit the Well, here's the good news. BitLocker is really strong encryption. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, if, if, if you can't get these recovery keys on your Microsoft account, yeah, you're going to have to format. Uh, and uh, next time, next, you know, I could see how in this setup, I know some companies do do this. In this setup, they would say, okay, we're going to enable BitLocker now. But they would have to give you an option to save those keys out. And uh, probably, you know, you were going, yes, yes, you weren't paying much attention, and it saved them. That's and if, what I did. I yeah. would have just done yes, 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 normal, yep. normal, yep. So it's a, So almost certainly it's in your Microsoft account. That's the good news. And, okay. if, and if you were to lose your laptop, well, you'd be all right. Oh, there's the silver lining. Right? Yeah, nobody can. Your data is un unavailable to anybody. Maybe even you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> do you go to the beach often? Uh, we do. Uh, so the, jealous. Uh, it, uh, we live. We live in. We live in a place called Villa Real de San Antonio, which is right on the Spanish border. <sighs> right on. Uh, oh, I remember you said you were going to do that, so you could go back and forth to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah, we nice. Were just, we were just there oh. yesterday. So. So, so, so you recommend this living the life? I, I recommend it fully. Well, John, I, you know, I, you're my hero. Enjoy. <laughs> you're my hero. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, look on your. I'm sure it's got to be on your Microsoft account. There's just no way this could have happened without your knowledge. It's on your Microsoft account. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, the Gizwiz, coming up. Here comes Hurricane Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, heaven on the seventh floor. Dick D. Bartolo is here. You better be on the seventh floor. Those storm surges are going to go up at least a couple of uh, stories. Uh, I put five extra chains on the mirrored ball. That is going. <laughs> that is not going Hurricane anywhere. Hurricane Henri. <laughs> yeah. My wife cor corrected me. I said, "Is Hurricane Henry coming?" She says, "It's Henri." I said, "Oh, bien sûr. Is Hurricane Henri coming?" <laughs> so, uh, but I, I'm making light of this, but that's tomorrow, right? Hurricanes hitting the East Coast. Yeah, My mom's yeah, in uh, Rhode Island. She's going to get hit. You're in Manhattan. Uh, are, but, you know, you're near the boat basin there, right? Are you at sea level? Yeah. Uh, well, fortunately, my apartment, you have to come up like three flights of stairs. Oh, you're to get okay. From the, yeah, so I, there's no problem. There. If I were you, though, I'd, I don't know, get a rowboat, tie it to the stoop, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Well, stay safe. And, That's and the, yeah, all, and the boat's very secure because between the ferry boats, the lunch boats, the sightseeing boats, and the circle liner, there are already nine lines on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're safe. All right. That's yeah, but, yeah. Be be careful tomorrow, and uh, we don't want anything you. to happen to Thank Disneyland. You. That would be a national tragedy if Disneyland got flooded. You've got more Mad Magazine memorabilia in there. I mean, this is uh, this is a little virtual museum now. It is. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. It's, 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 we'll Dick, be safe. Dick has been Mad's maddest writer for more than five decades. He's also our gizmo wizard, or gizwiz, joins us every week to uh, share a gidget, a gidget or a gadget with us. What do you got this week? Uh, you know, I have something fun for back to school, and, and I got this from the company, the, the uh, PR lady called and said, are you interested in a backpack? Are you and going said, back well, to school, Dick? <laughs> one more year, Leo. <laughs> this is it. This is it. That and, and it's not an equivalent. It's going to be a real high school diploma. Oh, nice. So I'm, it's about I'm time, very excited. Dickie D. I'm very, very about excited time. about it. Oh, yeah. I see Myra has redesigned your site. Yes. Well, that is the um, the site that is for people who are on phones and tablets. And today, I just swapped over the. Uh, it's nice the, uh, URL, so that it goes directly there. Yeah, this it looks is good. good. Nice this and clean. This is good. Right? And if yeah. you click the button that says "The Gizwiz Visits the Tech Guy" on the right there at g i z w i z dot b i z, you can see all the gadgets. Dick yeah. mentions so on the show. The, yeah, and, and so this backpack, I said, you know. 
I, I like to do a backpack every fall. Kids are going back to yeah. school, people are traveling. But it has to something different. She said, how about one that gives you a massage? <laughs> said, what? what? A massaging exactly. backpack? I, I, she, said, she said, let me tell That's you one. just what kids I, need these days. I think you'll be, no, this is what we need. Oh, okay. So it has, it has a pair of massaging pads in the shoulder. That's hysterical. And then it has a pair down around your waist. And it's kind of interesting because okay. the backpack comes with a locking uh, belt web in the front so that when you click on the massage for your lower back, the backpack is tied up against your back so that you can feel uh, the massage. Does it add action. a lot of weight to the pack? To have you know what? The, the whole backpack is is uh, 1.3 quarter pounds. Oh, so it's not there. Nothing. And there's a little button that is off to your right, and you press it once, and it does shoulders. You you press bzz, it a second bzz, time. Bzz, yep. can you, is it really? It does, can you feel it? it? I mean, does your waist. You can. You uh, can. Now, is it? can I take this on a plane, or is the battery too big? Well, well, this is the deal. You're using your own battery pack. Ah. Oh. Okay. Now, what they recommend is a battery pack that has two ports because they also have one of those deals where the battery pack is fed through the backpack so that there is a USB port on the front of the backpack so you can plug something in without opening any of the pockets. I get why it's not so heavy because you, you're responsible for the battery. For the backpack. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. And I have, uh, I think it's an anchor with uh, two USBs out. And so I plug one in, that powers the massage. I plug the <laughs> other one in, and that leads up to the charging pocket at the front of one of the uh, straps. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's very reasonable to be priced. It, it's a hundred bucks. Wow. And um, does it I have feel no... like a smartphone vibrating though? I mean, does it really? I mean, how much of a no, massage? No, it? It's better. It's better than a smartphone because the pads that you push against you are about an inch and a half thick. So a smartphone is really thin. So these these pads can people are... hear it vibrating like? Uh, you know, I'm sure they could tell from the look in your eyes that something's yeah. going on, but can they... You know, just hand me that backpack. <laughs> I, I will, I, my, I've sent Myra, my assistant, to get it. <laughs> and, and we she won't it. take it off. She's refusing yeah. to take it off. Yeah. Come on, Myra. You can't, don't, <laughs> don't bogart that backpack. Yeah, exactly. Share it. Just, uh, pass it around. Exactly. Let me just uh, click Did on you the name, it, you name? Do you name it Buzzy the Vibrating Backpack? No, I didn't. Let me see here and get my little switch. <laughs> uh, if you want to get a link to this, by the way, uh, it's available on Amazon, 100 bucks. Dick has it at his website. And you know what? I don't make a penny, but uh, it's, it's a better buy at Best Buy. Okay? Oh, he makes money, though, if you buy it at Amazon. So yeah. buy it at Amazon. Help a guy out here. <laughs> okay. I'd be careful, uh, I don't know, wearing that through... Um, I don't know a metal detector into an oh, office well, you're building. Not gonna, no, this is this is going to be ideal when you're walking around Pet, Pepcom or CES after two hours, and you just want. Some I, really, I got to say I that this is gonna you know what? There's there's times that I would definitely like a little bit of a a little bit of that. Yes, a little bit of jingle yeah. jangle. Yeah, on your <laughs> on your back. Dick D. Bartolo, go to gizwiz.biz. He's a he's a dancing uh, fool here. He is uh, our disco disco celebrity of the week. There he is in the uh, Disneyland dancing around with uh, who is that? Tina Turner. You're dancing with? That's no, no, it's Myra. It's Myra. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, gizwiz.biz. If you're there. On the brand new, beautifully designed website, you'll notice that there is a what the heck is it contest. And uh, actually, you now have a menu at the top, which is nice because you can go right there directly. What the heck is it? Or press the big button. A close-up of a gizmo or a gadget. If you can identify this correctly, you're in the drawing for an autographed copy of Mad Magazine. Actually, you're in the drawing if you can... Just be clever in your wrong answer. It's the October 2021 edition, the Sportacular edition. And Dick does a nice autograph and everything. So gizwiz.biz, click the link. 
I love Mad Magazine, I have to say. <laughs> Click the link. See if you can identify that. While you're there, you also can find a link to Dick's podcast, gizwiz.tv, that he does every week. If you like this vibrating backpack, <laughs> you'll love the podcast, full of all sorts of gizmos and gadgets. Dick, have a, have a great week. You too, buddy. And stay safe tomorrow. Safe, I will safe. do that. You think this is going to be another okay. Sandy kind of hurricane thing? Or? Oh, boy, I hope not. Because that was, was terrible. really terrible. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm nervous for you, but take take care, and we'll talk next week and see how it all Okay, buddy. All take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Boy, time goes fast. Um, thank you all for being here. Don't forget all the answers, all the links, everything at the website, techguylabs.com. Look for show 1,821, 1821. That's uh, today's episode for August 21, 821. So that works out kind of nice, 1821. Uh, thanks to uh, Professor Laura, our musical director, Kim Schaffer, the phone angel. Thanks to you, all of you who called, all of you who listened. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. I'm Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for the tech guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.